but if you go just south of Chicago into Detroit, into Toledo, and then eventually even into Cleveland, Erie, and Buffalo, that's where this storm is headed. Police in Berlin, Germany say 35 people, including 18 children, are hospitalized. At What up, Blake? What up, y'all? How y'all feeling this morning? I'm feeling a little queasy. What's up, BMO? How y'all feeling this morning? It's hot in here. What up, Sharon Thurman? Good morning, team. Let me go with my comments. People around here getting ready. What up, Artie? Thank you, BMO. I appreciate it. Uh, trying to push that bad boy. I'm gonna do a a a, a, a replay today. <laughs> trying to get that bad boy over ten thousand. Want to point out that all my joints are organic. No boost, baby. Straight organic. No, I don't got a cold, man. This is how I am in the mornings until I get up and get going. It takes a minute for my system to get itself together. So, you know, I get my morning snorts and giggles like the Giggle Snort Hotel. Y'all remember the Giggle Snort Hotel? That was like a spooky show to be having on Sunday mornings. I eighty ninety four to the Ryan what twenty one minutes in Stevenson Tri State to Lakeshore Drive it should take you twenty one minutes to get there outbound nineteen 
Over on the Eisenhower, Route 390 to the Old Post Office, a 44-minute ride, outbound 28 minutes. Kennedy O'Hare to downtown, 20 minutes in both direction, and Lakeshore Drive, no problems in either direction. Rain turning to snow today. A winter weather advisory will go into effect for multiple counties in Illinois today. Tonight, dropping down to 27, it's currently 36 degrees. That's a look at traffic and weather. I'm Jennifer Thompson. It's 6.07 on 1690 AM, WVON. The views expressed on our programs are not necessarily those of WVON, Midway Broadcasting Corporation, or our participating sponsors. Live from the Xfinity Studios at WVON. You're listening to The Morning Show with Mays Jackson on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Rise and shine. Wake up, Chicago. Wake up, world. This is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, how you feeling this morning? Oh, I'm feeling great. You know, that, I, I just thought, did I, did I test my voice? Can I actually speak? But yeah. You know, you know what? We don't do the morning. Me, 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 me. I don't like, oh, <laughs> so it's like if you catch me early in the morning, you might get the... <clears throat> Good morning. Boy. You know how you got the frog voice? Yes, and they'd be like, are you okay? And everybody asks in the morning, are you sick? Are you okay? No, I got to get through. I got a whole morning cycle. It's like the snort stuff, you know, all that crazy stuff. And then, oh, I understand. And then by, it's like they don't understand. Like my body wakes up and I'm functioning, but like all of the other stuff doesn't even get started. Like my, my body is moving and my head and brain is working. But because I don't talk or say anything before I get on the show, nothing has been tested. Right. Right. Nothing has been tested. So you start and you're like, wow. And everybody's like, what's going on? All right. It is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, I'm going to practice something today. I was realizing I watched the interview yesterday. I rewatched the interview. I don't really often rewatch stuff because I just try to, you know, like move on and keep going and all that stuff. But even as I was trying to watch the interview yesterday, I think I'm going to try and work on my levels, right? Because this is a microphone. Oh, so, you, you, you had a lot of high and lows. Yes, uh, yes. I'd be like, I'd be, man, I was like, so I think I understand when people are like, oh, I got to turn my phone down. I, I mean, I think it's so, so much stuff. It was, but Todd, I am still uh, feeling pretty good about that interview yesterday. Uh, all of the news stations reported, not all of them, but quite a few news stations reported on it. And he is on his way to The View. So I think of it like this. God, The View. Uh, the view and the view is like religion for women. It is like my wife comes home and rewatches the view, and I'm like, really? Like every time I come home, it's like, and she already hands, she just hands over the remote because I like, I know you don't think I'm finna sit up here and watch these women cackle about, and then that's when I get in trouble yeah, and I I'm get like, sent God. to my room. I'm like, oh lord. But uh, Rod is on his Rod, Bogu Governor Bogoyevich is on his way to. Um, the view and he's on a national media tour but i did think it was pretty pretty i think it was a pretty good get yesterday you know considering all of the 
places and everybody that wants to get them in on demand. And I think the one thing that people told me they appreciated yesterday was the opportunity to not fight, not have a fight on air, but yeah. a lit, but an opportunity to hear. Because I think if you hear, I'm not again. I just thought he he made a credible. He was credible in his his opinions and viewpoints. Well, so, you can't you can't hear it if it's just yak 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 yak. Listen to it, and then you make a decision. Exactly. All right. Well, it is the Talk of Chicago sixteen ninety. I'm your host Mace Jackson. Got my co-host Ty Stroger. But back in the saddle, she is right. back, y'all. It is Miss Jennifer Thompson. Jennifer, welcome back. You everything good? Everything straight? All right. Awesome. 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 Well, that is Miss. Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom. Gotta say what's up to the music conductor, the soul plane, Miss Sonia Escobar. Sonia Escobar, how are you feeling? You feeling great? Well, you know what you that you know you always say you feeling great. Well, good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Let's get this thing up to fifty thousand feet. Let's fly, fly, fly away. We got stuff to talk about today, Todd. Um, I you know what? Did you read Capital Facts yesterday? No, I was uh, I, I got the the info on um, capital facts that you're in it but i didn't get a chance to read <laughs> that i've been that 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 the speaker had plans to handle me right like I, you know we got to talk about this is the thing we got to talk about because can i tell you what happened to me yesterday after that email that came out i got calls from a lot of lobbyists and people who get it in downstate and they was like man we were so busy Plant saying you was incredible, and and it was like, in the meantime, they were like, we got to get this guy, yeah, right. We got to get this guy. You know, I, I got we got to talk about this. I'm I I I I, I have debated on how I want to discuss this because I do think that there is a challenge there. It's like it's a. This is how they get us sometimes. So we gonna talk about that because yes, Todd. Uh, the infamous FOIA request yesterday, in case you all do not know, um, and I think I'm going to keep the names out of it for right now, uh, but there was uh, amongst a treasure trove of emails that were uncovered from a FOIA request, which is a Freedom of Information request, there was um, mention of none other than Mays Jackson. Now, I am going to mention this guy, Tom Cullen, right? I'm going to mention him. Cause he was he started with the snitching. See, but you know what, Todd? Did you see that? Did you read? You didn't no, see the email. Yeah, I, I didn't get any of the info though. What is so crazy about it is, except that they were trying to uh, handle you. You're right. Think about this. The whole email conspiracy is in response to me saying me and black legislators trying to work together to prevent a. Be, a, prevent a Mike Brown situation from happening in Chicago or in Illinois. If y'all don't remember Mike Brown, Mike Brown was in Ferguson, Illinois, and I mean Ferguson, Missouri, and uh, he was choked and killed in the middle of the street. And so I was working with some legislators to try and pass some laws to try and protect black people. And how about the white lobbies? Todd, it's really crazy when you think about it. It was a whole machination of white people, white lobbyists, manipulating black people or trying to manipulate black people to handle me instead of the black people being like, dang, they trying to stop black people from getting killed. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is just, I, like, if you got a sword, why you, why? Well, I, I, I find it hard to believe that they would even... Uh, put it in writing? Well, first put it in writing, but it seems like they put everything in writing. It what? You know what? But that, that they would even try to handle uh, something about black people in this fashion. Well, not just this fashion, in this century. But but think of... All right, I'm going to go to the other headlines, but we're going to talk about this. Because we got... It's like... we. I don't know why our faith is in white folks. When the white folks are scared of your black yes. folks... You do realize that Forrest Claypool went around saying that he was going to be better for black people than my dad was, and he had some black people running around with him. You know what? Uh, my feelings was hurt. You know, we'd always joke, it was time for ice. We got to get in the car and drive up north. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like my feelings are hurt. Like, I, and you know what else I'm worried about? 
what I'm really worried about is more emails coming out and what those other emails like. The, this was like a sidebar. It could be anything. Like you think about point. at this point, you yes. know, they got to be looking at like Mike McClain needs to get in the bathtub. That's what Mike McClain needs to do. Oh. Mike McClain needs to get in the bathtub. You can't say that. Huh? You can say that. <laughs> hey man, he needs to get in the bathtub. I'm telling you, all the guys need to be calling him like you need to get in the bathtub, dog. We got your family, but you got to get in the bathtub. Look, it's the you and you know what I'm like, now. You have, if you the only way you know what I'm talking about is if you saw the Godfather, right? That was one of my favorite scenes though. When his brother walked in, that's Godfather too. Yeah, but uh, he ain't getting in the tub. Ah, uh, jeez. I mean, Ty. That sounds so messy. Ty. <laughs> That's why you get in the tub. Then you can just let it all go down the drain. Oh. <laughs> it's Talk Chicago 1690. And we can't be having inside jokes on the radio, so I'll tell you when to come back. We'll be back. Well, yesterday was... I was running around. I didn't get a nap. I got home and it was already like five something. I hadn't slept. It was awful. Man. <laughs> I didn't know how to handle it. Phew. Yes, that, you know what? Well, I, well, actually, I, I was you in did. a comatose state for like five hours until I went to bed. That's that's how I feel. Like yesterday, I, I stayed out a little bit late yesterday too. I had, um, I smoked a cigar yesterday. Um, and drank some of the smoothest tequila that I've ever had. Hmm. I ordered way too much food in compensation for that. All right. And like, you know, I was like, oh, I got to eat everything on the menu. And I fell asleep with all of it. Um, oh, is that a cardinal? Oh, cool. Um, so, I, I don't, like... Well, first of all, so you didn't read the email? You didn't read it at all? No. Okay, so I'll read the quote to you. Here, I'll read it to you. I'm going to read it to you. Hold on. All right. All right, this is, this is from Capital Facts. McLean was also involved in things like trying to figure out how to tone down the criticism from black activist Mays Jackson, who is no Madigan fan. This is him talking to Tim Mapes. So now, realize that at this point, two of the three highest ranking people in the whole Madigan organization, which essentially means the, the highest ranking people in the state, are conversing on email on how to handle me. Right. McLean was also involved in things like trying to figure out how to tone down the criticism from black activist Maze Jackson, who is no Madigan fan. So, Tim, McLean wrote to Mapes, I have blank working on blank, who is Maze's sponsor years ago, to turn the kid around. Blank is doing okay, but clearly not successful yet. Uh... <laughs> Uh, he said, Blank would most likely be a ComEd lobbyist, Blank, who was close to Mike Ma Mike McClain. He then added, as Mapes, check, this was the, fe th this is what made me love this whole thing. He then asked Mapes for a list of things that Madigan had done for the African American community. <laughs> Jackson hosts a radio show on WBON. So now here's what I'm saying. If the white boys come to you as the black dude, and say, man, can you help us with the black dude? Instead of trying to fix the black dude, why don't you say, you know what? Hey, black dude, they nervous about you. Let's run the play. You got a sword, and you your answer is, they like, uh-oh, you got a sword. And they say, can you go disarm yourself? Can you disarm yourself? Now... What's beautiful to me is it was they were unsuccessful, right? But it also tells me that I'm not crazy. Think about this is now, Todd, when they've stopped trying to whoop me, and they realized that they can't that they. So imagine when all the dirty tricks was going on, right? 
Imagine when the emails come out with the dirty tricks. Now, what's crazy about this email though is, if you go and go, now I went and I took more. Most people just take the clip. I went and read the whole all the emails, and when you see the legislators that they used to thwart the bill that was really just asking for a special prosecutor in the case of a police involved shooting oh the bill got, uh, got they used another black legislator to derail it so it got, and put a it got uh kibosh. yes so they put the kibosh on it. The, and then they bait and switched but the white lobbyist was reading my facebook page cut and pasted my facebook page that's tom cullen uh -huh. right who was the speaker's longest serving legislative such and such? Was he yours? You know what I'm talking about, the lobbyist? Tom and I graduated from Ignatius. <laughs> uh, you are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. Got my co host, Todd Stroger. Hey, Todd. Hey, Todd telling me his alumni, his alum brothers, was putting the tabs on me, man. Hmm. Your alum, so that's how the Saint Ignatius mob do. Well, I mean, I'm saying so. Basically, you know this that uh, uh, there was a, a big group of Saint Ignatius uh, graduates who worked in the state house, and then they all became wealthy. They're part of this wealthy lobbyist group, you know. Yeah, pretty much. So, Todd, it's like I shouldn't even say pretty much. I don't think I don't know anyone who didn't. Who, right? Yeah. It, exactly. They all and 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 so here is this. Here are these two, and then what's crazy is, you know, I was thinking about this was during the Laquan McDonald and all this stuff, and the legislator, you know, I was working with Art Turner Jr. on the bill, uh -huh. right? And Art, Art was out with me on when we did Black Friday. He was out on the front lines, had his hoodie on, took off his suit, was out there with us, and we had sat around trying to figure out how to. How to thwart this? Like, I guess, I mean, not how to thwart it, but how could we legislatively address what we saw happen? And I don't think there was anything wrong with that, but I guess my question is, why does the St. Ignatius, what's his name, Tom Cullen? Y'all went to school together? You graduated together? Y'all yep. was class of what? 81. So class of 81 at St. Ignatius, Tom Cullen decides that he is going to cut and paste and screenshot my just my bill, my proposal, because basically we were trying to, you know what, I'm going to save this. I'm going to save well, this. Well, you know, uh, it, you probably look at this as a black and white thing. I mean, they look at it as a green and white thing. Well, no, I would think that uh, if I got what the bill was doing, the white thing is fighting for the, the police faction, which is in essence, you know, white run, like all the, the unions. Right. I mean, I get it, Todd. It's like, but this, all this does is tell me, that, like, I, so, I, you know, when you read the emails, and then you see what their plan to thwart what we were doing was, and they used another legislator, and then here's the crazy part. The crazy part is looking back, I brought the legislator on the show, because I was celebrating him for his action not realizing that the whole reason that he passed the bill that they had him pass his version of the bill was to take the guts out of what we were trying to do oh yeah they're very good at that I, I'm, I'm I, so I'm hey, okay so we're gonna talk about this because I don't know how I gotta address this in some kind of way but we'll talk about it all right let me get through some of these headlines uh did you see the Kobe Bryant memorial service yesterday I uh, I saw Beyonce I saw Jimmy Kimmel I saw part of his wife, and then I had to... You saw part of his wife? What part? Her face. <laughs> okay. Her hair was covering her You didn't have those... <laughs> Ty, Ty, you know Ty went and got his x-ray glasses. <laughs> x-ray <laughs> Remember those x-ray glasses used to be on the back of the... Uh, used to be on the back of the comic books? Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I ordered a pair, and it never worked. No, they never came. Like and the sea monkeys, too. No, she wasn't my type. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah. Uh, I saw that, and then later... I heard everyone talking about how passionate that Michael Jordan was. Hmm. Go, what you got for me? Go ahead. What you got? So, oh, play. People that Kobe and I were very close friends. But we were very close friends. Kobe's was my dear friend. He was like a little brother. Everyone always wanted to talk about the comparisons. 
between he and I. I just wanted to talk about Kobe. You know, all of us have brothers and sisters, little brothers, little sisters who, for whatever reason, always tend to get in your stuff, your closet, your <laughs> shoes, everything. It was a nuisance, if I can say that word. But that nuisance turned into love over a period of time just because the admiration that they had for you as big brothers or big sisters. The questions, the wanting to know every little detail about life that they were about to embark on. He used to call me, text me, 11.30, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. Talking about post-up moves, footwork, and sometimes the triangle. <laughs> At first, it was an aggravation. But it, then it turned into a certain passion. This kid had passion like you would never know. It was classic to see Michael Jordan standing up there. You know, the funniest, he did some more comedy. Cause he said, now he's gonna have another crying face me. But it was, it was, that, that was touching. Uh, touching the memorial service for Kobe Bryant. Uh, speaking of touching, Harvey Weinstein goes to jail. Uh, they, they, he got the straight, he, they took, did they take, did he get to take his stroller with him? You call it a stroller? What is it? What they call it? I, I uh, walker, it. stroller, whatever it was. Yeah. yeah, they took him straight to jail. He automatically had heart palpitations. He went for I was like, Rikers Island. I was like, put him in the site. Man, does he get the program? Mem Speaking of the program, you know what? See, now Harvey Weinstein should point to the whole uh, Michael Bloomberg. Remember Khalif Browder? When he went to jail, he didn't. Even, he ain't even see inside of Rikers Island. I'm going to tell you, man. That Harvey Weinstein, he's, oh, he's now playing in all the angles. He's playing every angle. Then he was going to Bellevue, which made me think of Catcher in the Rye. Remember that movie, that book, Catcher in the Rye? I didn't like it. Uh, he was crazy. Uh, Jesse Smoulye was in town yesterday. No, uh, he pled not guilty. Uh, judge James Lynn is the judge. You see, Pot is making millions in taxes, ten million in the first year, so 120 million estimated in revenue. Uh, over the course of 12 months. I told you, it's just, just like, like that casino, casino stuff. Where everybody crying, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Yeah, you're gonna make a ton of money. And, and meanwhile, no black people. Okay, yeah. um, mandatory smoke. Did you see this? Okay, Gil Villegas is talking about he wants mandatory uh, Sonia, why are you making that face? Uh, oh, he wants to um, have mandatory smoke, hardwired smoke detectors in every house. Can I just tell you, I hate the hardwired smoke detectors. Because when one goes off, if you cook something and it burns, then they all go off. And then it's like, doo, 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 and we got four floors. So you're like, dude, you chasing all the floors, trying to turn it off. And then you get the one off. And then here come the next one. Doo. So then I said, okay. I was really upset. Then I saw it was, um, he said, you have to have a 10-year battery, which I think is the real deal. So we got to check out who is selling 10-year batteries right now. because now, So the 10-year battery costs $15, but the smoke detector costs 5 <laughs> uh, oh, you, oh, you're saying your smoke detector's battery is bad, so when it goes off, all the rest of them go off. Yep. Ah. Yep, yep, yep. And then you're like, beep, which one is it? Beep. Then you go fix the one downstairs. No, nope. beep. Yeah, yeah, man, those are great things. I remember I was in Springfield. What time is it? To go. go ahead. All right, we'll talk about it all when we come back. It's Top Chicago with the social media question of the day. Live from the WBON newsroom. Here's and she said, I was in the bathroom and I heard this banging on the door, and I go to the door and it's a fireman, and I'm like, there's a fire lady. And I go to the kitchen and she had left some pot on or something. I was like, whew. Man, I used to come home every night and swear I was going to cook a whole meal, turn on the, um, turn on the pot to let the grease get hot mm -hmm. and fall asleep and wake up to there was a time I was so I think it's amazing though that the white guy was just 
So I, I, so I remember I used to tell y'all they have people assigned to watch my Facebook page. Like right now, every morning there is a Madigan staffer who is assigned to watch and listen to what we say. Every day. And that email means that it went all the way back to 2015. I told you the thing that saved me in the whole game, like completely, like without them trying to completely destroy me, was social media because I had my own way to tell my story. Right? And I, I could, when they would be like, when I got fired from the Defender, I would be like, this is what's happening. This is what they're doing. So they weren't able to do it in secret. I... So, I have a conundrum, right? So, I think that... I think that the person that they tried to get to work me was like... He would just... He was never trying to tell me what to do. He would always just be like, look, man, don't kill yourself. He'd always be like, don't kill yourself. You do what you do, but don't kill yourself. Right. The other one, I wonder, was actively, but he was actively taking orders to tell the person to come get on me. And, yeah, man, it's like, I am frustrated with, like, I really wish I did not have, like, physical proof that, Instead of being like, man, this is our young soldier who's happy to carry the sword. Who is willing to do talk about the, sh the stuff that we all know is real issues. We just, everybody can't say it because of their position. I don't like the fact that instead of, like in a fight, I always tell my friends, don't hold me back, hold that motherfucker back. <laughs> like when it's a fight Don't grab me Right cause you gonna grab me Put my hands behind my back He gonna punch me And then you gonna be like man I'm sorry Instead of saying man Tell him Y'all You know the simplest way to handle that was Let the let the damn bill get voted on Oh yeah Let it get voted up or down Like why was it so important I mean think about this and I'm I'm so we did. It's like I'm so frustrated because again, most people aren't gonna read the emails like that because you have to dig. You have to go. It's like in page twelve something something something. To quickly find the best candidates for. And so you gotta dig to find it. But then when you find it and you see, and they're like, oh, the speaker was so great. He's such a great person. He thought in advance of this because he knew that the Mike Brown thing was going to. And they were like, we are so lucky to have him as our lead. I mean, I'm reading this shit like, are y'all really writing it? Like, is this real? Mm -hmm. Is this real? And it's like to see it in writing, like in writing, and your name is right there. And they like, man. And the thing we talking about is Mike Brown. Mike Brown is laying in the street dead. And these white mugs are plotting against the bill to just say we just want a special prosecutor. And even it might not even pass. Let it. But but the white boys are so into power plays. So into we going to check these niggas and keep them in line. Well, they don't want the white people to have to vote for it. And vote no. Or yes. Either way, they don't want them to vote at all. What the? Because it'll show who they are. They don't want that. Even the small things are big things. So. That's my thing. Yes. That was a simple. But hey, we get the same kind of beat up from uh, black folks too. So. <laughs> well, I'm saying when. Won't let you. I felt trembles in my heart. I have no one concern. My one can get with you till my dreams come. Here's what I'm gonna do. 
uh, sitting up in my room, about here thinking about you. I must confess, in my press, will you sitting up in my room, about here thinking about you. I must not mess. I should bring you. Mm 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 mm. Tell me what is wrong. Like so. Yeah, but one concern, my one concern is you did my feel you. Here's what I'm going to do. You are tuned into to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, that song makes me smile, man. Brandy, you know what? Brandy was a, now you're making me think about. I love that song. I can't tell you anything else from Brandy, but that song just touches me. <laughs> I'm know? telling you, it was a, I mean, it was like when, it was like she was still a nice little girl. It was before Wanye was beating her up and, you know. She folks, was in a bad relationship? From, with the dude from Boys to Men, an underage bad relationship. Oh, wow. Like, the, you know, the lead singer from Boys to Men was. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. Yeah, man, yeah, it was crazy. But I'm going to tell you, and then he, I was like, she was not old enough for you to be dating her, Wanye. But that's a whole nother story. I'm gonna tell you. you know. Um, Todd, I wanna know what is the current state of affairs, black political state of affairs in Illinois. Black people beating up on each other in all uh, different fashions. Um, <laughs> we have no unity. I don't expect much. I, I, I've become a, a real cynic in, uh, lately. You know what? I am, I am fighting the Darth Vaderness of it all. I'm really fighting it. As in, like, I am. I told you what, what the President uh, Jones told me. What he said. It's better to be feared than loved. Yeah. And so, but we. So here's the thing. How do we go. What makes us fearsome? Like, I, I was just thinking, like, man. Todd, I. Success. But, I mean, if you were to look around, you would. People, I feel like this is a, a redundant, uh, what do you call it, a rhetorical question, but what is our black political state of affairs? You know, I again, I look around and I see all of these people, right, that are elected right now. All of these black people in all of these places. And I don't see, I, I don't know how we, I don't know what is going on politically. Like, I'm saying, like, right now, I think that there is... Okay, so can I... Okay, we're going to have a, a frank conversation. I need to start here, and I think that I'm going to start with this baseline. Did you see... Okay, this is going to be a family conversation that, in my estimation, somebody needs to say, but nobody wants to. And so what's going to happen is, March 18th, we're going to be looking around in the shambles talking about what happened. Um, first of all, did you see the Kim Fox poll that came out yesterday? You gave me some numbers yesterday. Um, so, Todd, I was under the impression that Kim was, like, far in the lead. Right. Yeah, I mean, last week... You gave me some numbers, and it looked like that. Ah, she's got a, you know, pretty good distance here. Um, I was under the impression that she was up by 16 points internally. At least that's what I was. I was hearing w rumors and whispers that her mm -hmm. internal polls showed her up 16 points. I then, and I said, okay, I was watching the Juicy Smouye thing, and then everything, and I said to myself, and I said this to you. I said, I believe that Kim Fox is going to win. But, oh no, I said, I believe Kim Fox won't lose. Right? And in that, you know, like when you're, you got a super large lead and then you just play 
not you don't play offense anymore. You just holding on, yeah. trying to hope the clock runs out. I've watched Northwestern do that a couple times this year. Right, and they lost both those games. <laughs> well, it, it, if you watch football, it's like anytime somebody think about what, what was that Kansas City game when the Kansas City Chiefs was up, they lost, they were down by twenty four points, and they was like, hold on. Yeah, right. Um, I okay, so. I then saw a poll yesterday from Anzalone List. Now, in case you don't know, Anzalone List is like one of the premier polling institutions in the in the, the in the nation. Right. In the nation. Their poll had Kim up by two points only. With her unfavorables higher than her favorables. Right? And, and if I remember, it was a huge number of undecideds. Yes. T with, now, Todd, that is very concerning because I think that uh, Bill Conway is surging, and I think I don't see a response to that, a counter. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think this Juicy Smouye then adds another million dollars in, in earned media. So you got, every, I didn't really, man, I'm turning on the fire. I was watching The View yesterday. This fool Conway got con commercials on all the women shows, on everything, like so the spot. So understand that a spot during um, like a nighttime spot on Channel 7 costs $25,000 a pop. Ooh. They're running there. You know, he's trying to, to reach white women. Um, apparently, according to the like to run in the group too. according to the poll, he is, and I don't see white women stepping up. I don't. I don't see the Kelly Cassidy's. The right when it's pot and it's time to come out and say we letting people out of jail, they didn't and they ran. Right, right. Now the reason I bring this up is because I think that black people need to wake up. I, I I'm gonna tell you I was lulled to sleep. I really was. I, I really did not think that this race was going to be an issue. This race is a real issue, black people. And the the lulling to sleep of black folks because this presidential race is dragging, right? There's not a big push locally. And I, I, I feel like black folks need to wake up. I, I really think that black people need to understand that all of this criminal justice reform stuff that everybody's talking about across the country is right now under full-on assault. Now, compound that with the potential to lose the only black Supreme Court justice. And I'm going to tell you that I've seen polls on that race. And in seeing the polls on that race, Todd, it does not look like there's going to be a black Supreme Court person on the seat. A black justice on the Supreme Court. I told you that. <laughs> this is not news to me. I don't expect uh, three black candidates to, to chop up the vote and that one of them will uh, appear victorious. Now, the only way that could happen, of course, is if the white candidates are so bad that they won't get any, any big boost by white people. But... I don't know. Do you see that happen? Obviously not. I am. Um, because you know white people still don't vote for black people in public safety in any great number. And look guys. Black folks in Chicago need to wake up. You all need to recognize. It, it, let, me, let me not just say black folks. I'm also say black politicians. Y'all need to wake up. And connect the dots, right? There is a real issue going on, Todd. And it's like, we are, what do we, we don't have nothing right now politically. Like right now, what do we have? Give no, me, no. I mean, we don't have an organization. You don't have, there's nobody that, that can pull together the people, the places, the money, the resource. Where's the black money right now? Right now, we are pulling money to save our Kim Fox from George Soros. Right. Seriously. I, I, I look at this as those who are in the mix 
you know, when I, I mean they're at a certain level that most of us are, can't reach. They are, they sit on the sidelines until they see something that they think is going to be a winner. Instead of making a winner. Exactly. Make your winner. Make, like, see, this is my, this is what happens when you are so used to taking it and figuring out, Todd, think about this right now. Who is working on behalf of the black candidates right now, black? That I'm, 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 and I'm not, I'm not even talking about. You got me. I mean, what are we seeing as it relates to our black candidates, and what do we have politically, and how, how, how serious is criminal justice reform to black people? Like, is it as high of a priority? Remember when I told you that I feel like the message has been hijacked by millennials who don't vote. Who don't vote. <laughs> You're right. Right? And so right now, we are looking, uh, and, and I'm going to talk to Brother Ball and Harold Lucas, because they the dry bones, right? And, and I know they're going to say, man, we got that. I'm, I'm not even going to say what they're going to say. But when we come back, we need to talk about this, y'all, because there is no Laquan McDonald. Right? Laquan McDonald swept this criminal justice reform thing to the forefront. White folks are like, wait a minute, hold it, hold it, hold it now. It's one thing when they all feel guilty. But after that guilt goes away, what is the next step? What politically do we have? It, Todd, if somebody decides they want to go to war with a black political operation, how can we stop them? Let's talk about it when we come back. Yeah, Lori, how many people showed up and how many people did they get? Is Canvas... That's like, what are we going to do? Do we want to get together and mount up something and start working for our candidates in spite of themselves? Like, Ty, if you were watching this race right now, the Supreme Court race and the... If you were watching the Supreme Court race and the... Um... State's attorney's race. Well, how would you assess them? Uh, well, I would say that black people being who they are, and we are a separate group. Um, we got tons of people on the west side and the western suburbs, south side and the, the southern suburbs, but we are a group onto itself. It's not like we're interspersed among, you know, Irish and Polish and Czechs and all that kind of stuff. We're just our own big old group. Ninety eight percent black through the, all the black wars at least. So when we're trying to do something, if we don't act like a, a monolith, then it doesn't happen. And we also have to, to get an ally for most things. Unless, like in the primaries where there's, there's multiple candidates, our strength should be that we all can look at the black candidate and say, this is who we want uh, to be there. But, look, I look back to when Howard Brookins ran for state's attorney. That was the year that uh, Anita Alvarez won. There was, I think, five candidates. There was uh, Howard. There was Alvarez. There was Sufferden. And I, I think that was, maybe it was four. I think there was one other person. But Howard was the only black person in the race. For most of the wars, I would su suggest that he got maybe 60% of the black vote. And in that, he wasn't going to win. Because the white wards weren't going to vote for him at all. The truth of the matter is, white people tend not to vote for black people in any good numbers. So, you know, if we get 30%, we're, you know, to celebrate. If it, like my dad used to say, it depended on what was happening back south and out west. If you get those people to stick with you at a certain rate, you were going to win. With all these multiple candidates in the uh, judicial race, I don't see how one guy is, or, or a woman, will emerge from our neighborhood 
to to be the person. Uh, so, and in the state's attorney's race, I've I've said all along that as much as I like to see Kim Fox win, she is going to get the the uh, karate chop. She is going to get the Todd Stroger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she is gonna get strogered. I don't think she's. You, I, well, let me not laugh. Yeah, I don't want to be a monster. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not laughing. I think the thing I want to do is try and wake black people up, but I feel like there's no sense of urgency. No, we don't. We, well, we don't take this the same way that they do. That's why they're trying to kick your butt over something small. But meaningful to us. You are tuned into the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, I am concerned. I'm going to tell you, uh, I 100% thought that Kim Fox had this election in the bag. I was always suspect about what was going to happen in the Supreme Court race. But after seeing two polls yesterday, I'm, I'm really concerned that black folks are not taking this as serious as they need to. And... I think that turnout is going to be key, particularly for Kim Fox. Um, and I, I, I want to challenge the black community who has screamed about unjust treatment of our community. Like, what are you going to do? What are we going to do? Because I think that we're. I, I think if if we have not, if there is no proof, if we have never seen proof, there is no Democratic Party right now. You know, Mace, we are the hardest people on each other. If you didn't turn left, if, when, if you turned right when everybody, when somebody thought you should turn left, they'd be like, I ain't going for him. He didn't turn left. It, it's it's uh, crazy. We, we are trying to destroy ourselves as everybody thinks that they are the smartest guy in the room at all times, and he ain't doing nothing. She ain't doing nothing for him. You know, I, I think... But I think you got to be strategic in that too. I think some of that has to do with you got to know who the people are. Like I think some, like Todd, like I think the challenge for, I think one of the challenges black folks don't get is like with the white folks, they be like, let me help you. They want to help you as much as possible. Yeah. Black folks be like, oh, here he come again. White folks feel like if I can help you, you owe me. Not owe me, but you'll support me. Right, I try to do as many favors for people as I possibly can, so that at some point they'll remember. Most people try to forget, but or they try to forget, but it's the ones that you can depend on. Let me go to the phone lines. Let's start with Brother Harold Lucas. Harold Lucas, you're on Talk Chicago 1690. Where are we politically? Uh, what is our black state of affairs? Our black state of affairs, Maze and Todd, is that the established sold out Negroes who have benefited from being appointed or put in power by the Irish forces in this town go against the established black leadership within the party, right? And therefore, for example, there is no mile, mile, bottom up, grassroots, plus minus zero count, door to door campaign being funded in Kim Fox. Matter of fact, most of the people in Kim Fox campaign who are being shown on the TV are people who were placed in power through Rahm Emanuel. So they ain't really serious about her candidacy in terms of how you're going to stop the murder and mayhem of our children in the city, which is part of the plan. I guess that's the plan that Lord Lightfoot is going to use in 10 years to get the rest of us out of town so she won't have to deal with the, pop the issue because we would have been removed. Low and moderate income African Americans, which is the study at the University of Illinois has substantiated that the plan for transformation and that attack on us is specifically been designed for the last 10 years. So if, if we ain't going back to even discuss about how to gerrymander the second war to create the second war that they created and gave them all that billion dollars from 
from, uh, you know, the group up there where they created the new Second Ward, right? All right. But, but Harold, yeah. real quick, because I'm going to run out of time. I, but what right. do we do about Kim? One more, one more point. The Supreme Court Justice Peace. Yes. The, the, the two Negroes who they set up to go against the guy who was a point. Who's the the standard bearer? Yep. Both of them are the worst charlatans on the planet Earth. Hey Amen. I, I can't even deny that. Let me just like I, I thank you, brother Lucas. Let, and I, I really know both. Of, I know all the people involved. I just believe that it is that that to me, Todd, is the ultimate the, the Supreme Court race where we got three black candidates who are. These Negroes would not raise up to run against a white person to save their life. But now they're going to get up and they're going to run against two, against the black man. So we get nothing. And they and, and here's the lick. And they'll keep their seats. They will get rid of the, they, we will lose a black justice. They'll keep their seats. And then somebody told them we get y'all on the back. Come around. Y'all just take this Negro down. And guess what? Just like we saw, guess what? And whenever white boys come, it's always a Negro volunteering to take the fight to come stick us up. Did you see the story of Malcolm X? Did you, I'm sorry, I'm laying down. Did you see the story of Malcolm X? That, like, the, you know, when they solved this crime, they can always find some Negroes to come kill the brother. Who no, fighting for the black people. Brother Ball, you're on top of What's going on, my brothers? Great show yesterday, man. I enjoyed it, Nick. But today... Man, listen, Maze, I got a door. What do you call them things that they hang on your door? A door hanger. A little pamphlet. Yeah, a door hanger. Man, I got a door hanger yesterday. I walked the dog, and I looked. They said, oh, they, they, this is the only support I've seen for Kim Fox was a door hanger. Right? Mm -hmm. Man, why my dog trying to bite the door hanger out of my hand? So I flip it over, and Conway was on it. I threw it to him. I said, man, eat this damn door hanger. Up, <laughs> I don't believe. Did you see the standoff? That, that they had when they had their debate. Conway and the other two and Kim Fox. This man was so strong and abrupt. He he looked like he looked like the mayor, but he was talking in Kim Fox's face. He was so adamant about what he was saying, he was pointing his finger. These are the things that never get mentioned. They never get brought up. But like you said, May, who got Kim's back? Who have you heard speak up and say anything on Kim Fox's behalf besides you? Two. Besides this show, who have you heard? Nobody. Um, I, you know what? Where's our gorillas at? I'm Dr. Tell Umar Johnson said he's got <laughs> goons in Chicago. Have a good day, son. He's got <laughs> goons in Chicago. Where's Kim Fox go? You know what, bro? Ball. They. Uh, you know what? So I'm. This is what I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna be critical. Cause, 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 there's a lot to say. But what I would say is, I'll what, are, what are we going to do? I can't lose nothing. I, I'll be critical. Well, where are where are the people jumping up? There should be some people jumping up and screaming and saying, let's do this. I mean, they scream about everything else. Why can't they jump up and scream and organize about this? Uh, let's talk about it. We're going to talk about that. We'll continue this conversation when we come back. The Talk of Chicago and the Voice of the Nation. 1690 WVON. Yeah, like we got enough to lose. Uh, see, Clifton, see, I, Clifton Pierce said, you're talking about the people not taking this serious, the candidates are not taking it serious. If they did, they wouldn't have all those people running against each other. Where are the Ed Gardner, George Johnson, John Johnson, Al Raby? Well, I was telling the business community that last night. I was in a conversation. I was like, y'all have let the politicians run amok, right? You And it's like, you don't, y'all, and it was funny because... I was having a conversation, and the com and the and the and the black money dude was like, "Well, I could go to Burke. I mean, I talked to the niggas, but they can't get nothing done for me. I'm gonna go to Burke." And I was like, "And that's why the niggas can't get nothing done for you." That's exactly because right. you go to Burke, and so now I've been saying that for literally decades. And so now Burke, so now Burke and them got all the top black people. But are we gonna talk about Tom Cullen today? Todd, we gonna talk about what kind of person was he in high school? Just a regular guy. Was he like one of the Irish? Where did he come we from? We the, we weren't best buddies. Anymore. Well, of course not, because you know, you're black. TVs, uh, uh, you know, not TVs, but the uh, tables. I mean, he said it is. Yeah, he, he's from the 18th Ward. I'm from the 18th Ward. Well, we threw, he's one of the 18th he's Wards. From the 18th got, ward when it was white. Oh, the 18th <laughs> Ward when they got, before they got kicked out. Yeah. John Joyner was the person who kicked them out. Because, you man. So it means like most people. Doctor Finney isn't out there leading the charge. Doctor Finney leading the charge to the pokey. 
<laughs> but I'm saying, I want to understand what, hey man, y'all, so they, so I just, I mean, y'all got to understand. I really, just the depth of the fact that they went and was like, I just, you, here's the thing I really, I really, I don't even know if I want to foyer and find out what they said, what they said they was going to be doing. Like, can you imagine what the emails was like during the Ken Duncan campaign? <laughs> like, I'm telling you, somebody need to tell Mike McClain to get in the bathtub. Because, <laughs> then can they, I mean, think about, do you understand how crazy this is, that how much stuff he emailed in writing? Like, I, you know, I feel like he's like an old dude with an email that don't realize that it don't, it don't never go away. Right. So he thinks like, ha 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 ha. I mean, because when you read no, these right. emails, they're bantering with each other. Like, ha ha, we're going to have dinner. You imbibe too much. It was all type. Yeah, even when I joke on email, it would be nothing that I'd be like, now they may say, boy, he's, a, uh, he's silly, but it would never be like, oh yeah, we got him. No, nope, nope, nope. And it's so funny because yesterday the white and black lobbyists was like, dang dog, that's real power. If they if they trying to figure out if you got the speaker of the house, they they got people working on you and, and their resolve is could you please give us a list of all the black thing things he's done for the black people? Then they talk about he's been marvelous to the black people. Oh, that's why throughout the years they was like, find us some shit like an L stop or something like that that we gave them. You know, it was like it to read it. Oh, I'm not gonna do it. Oh, I'm not gonna do it. Do it. Do it. I'm not gonna do it. Do it. No, I think that my friend. So this is what I think. I think that the old guys think that they're protecting you from, like, boy, you don't, like, your mom be like, boy, they're going to whoop you. You better not, don't look them white people in the eyes. I was born to look white people in the eyes. Is that better? No, I was born to look people in the eyes, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You better look somebody in the eyes. No, I mean, I just think it's... No, I don't feel like it's... When you read that and you know that there was a plan and a plot to deal with you. Like, I don't think I want to read the emails because... I almost feel like I might find out too much. No, you don't just don't want to read it. Like you, they had your boy in the pay in there. No, I'm sure. That's what it, he probably got an alert. He told me about it. Huh? He's the one who told me about it. <laughs> he probably got an alert that his name was in. He told you about mine? Yeah. Mm. Tell him when we find out what his part of it was. Mm -hmm. We still living. I'm gonna tell y'all. Okay. Oh, it ain't my fault. <laughs> it ain't my fault. Oh, it ain't my fault. Did I do that? <laughs> oh, it ain't my fault. Just in case I forget them. See, I would say like if you were to hire me back then, you wouldn't have forgot how to win. 
Yeah. No, at this point, I just take that as every week this conversation. <laughs> Should have told you. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co host, Todd Stroger. Hey, Todd, I'm talking about Toto the black. It's like uh, light jazz or something. That's Toto? Uh huh. That was Toto? Yeah. Really? Uh huh. I thought, why did I think Toto. I never listened to Toto. I thought they was like, I always thought it was going to be some Wizard of Oz-ish type of stuff. <laughs> they were kind of, kind of, I look at them and I could be a little off, kind of a fusionist type of thing. They were trying to reach into the kind of blues R&B thing with their own thing. I'm going to have to check that out, man. I'm going to have to check that out now that I knew that song. I, them, I didn't know it was, I didn't know Toto sang that. I thought that was some black people. <gasps> man, you've been, you've been really... Between that and the drifters, man, we're gonna have to do something about this song. Yeah? Ty, I know Jay Z, man. That's what I know. <laughs> hey, it's the top of it's the top of Chicago, sixteen ninety AM. We are back. It's the top of the hour. Let me say what's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, as well as uh, what's up to Miss Sonia Escobar, the music conductor of the Soul Plane. Yes, I'll move the band. Woo. Is that better? Is that worse? It's so hot. Hey, y'all. Uh, um, I, you know what? I want to talk politics. So I'm going to keep this conversation going. Um, let me start by saying that, um, where's J.B. Pritzker? Where is he with the most vaunted political operation that we have seen? Where is he with all the money? Uh, where is he in the Kim Fox fight? Huh. For criminal justice reform. No, I'm just saying. Like, this, this is what I'm asking. Like, this is when you know who your team is. Like, to me... All political operatives operate all the time. It's just that sometimes they operate and they're not telling anybody what they're doing. Uh, well, they need to tell somebody what they're doing. And I think... Yeah, I mean, I think... So, I, I don't mean that that means that he's working for Kim Fox. I mean that some of those people are working for somebody. Well, where are they working? I don't know. I mean, but I'm saying, like, to me... Like, doesn't he deploy his crack staff... Doesn't he deploy his digital media team? I mean, think about this. Think about all of the people who who worked on JB's campaign that made that money that's working for Kim Fox. Why isn't all of that translated? Right. Where is the... You know, when, when I see uh, that... What's his name? George Soros from Out of State gives $2 million. Why wouldn't JB Prisker spend whatever it took to help protect criminal justice reform? I mean, think about how important... The expungements were to cannabis, to can passing of cannabis. I mean, he needed Kim Fox when he was passing that, right? Right. Where you at? So, well, probably you and I, you and I, our eyes. This is a establishment versus whatever the new thing is. But, uh, but Kim is an establishment. And that's what I'm saying. No, I'm talking about Conway. Oh, <laughs> but, but I'm saying I'm part of that. So, so in, in my mind, the governor. Is supposed to be part of something different now. So what? Why, Kim why is isn't, yeah. So why isn't he giving Kim some everything? I'm saying like what's he, he is spared no expense statewide. I mean, Kim is a critical part of 
this whole cannabis doing out there. Is the governor okay with us going backwards in time? Like I'm just saying, like Todd, you let me tell you. Remember? Oh, I'm sorry, I said I was gonna practice my lips. Todd, let me tell you. When I back, you know, like when it's a, I mean, remember when like I think the governor's got people working in some state rape, state rep races. Yeah, well, you know, he, he probably figures that is uh, as straight to his heart. He needs those people to, to do what he wants to black people. <laughs> Yeah, black people, well, everybody. But. but he needs those people. See, but see, this is see, see, this is me, you all. When I'm talking politics, right? And I don't. It's like, quite frankly, nobody will say anything. Everybody will be mush mouth. And on in and and on on March 18th, everybody will be talking about where are all the all hands on deck? Am I missing something? Where are all of the state workers? Can I tell you something? Can I tell? Can I tell you something? Where is the the chairman of the Democratic Party, Cook County, and state? Think about how much time and money that they spent to beat a state rep. Most of, they went and got President Obama. Where is President Obama right now? Am I crazy? Like I'm saying, this is. Has not criminal justice reform been our biggest issue for black people? Have they not paraded it in front of us? Todd, where you hey man, are you trying to do your black fact? I'm trying to get you to tell me where the people are. <laughs> I'm trying to find can somebody tell me where is the power structure that you? Is behind Kim? I thought I thought I started this off and then I was gonna let you run. Oh, okay. All right, well I'm gonna go to the phone lines. Let's go to Brother Hall. Brother Hall, you don't talk Chicago. Braha, I can hear you, sir. Seriously. Now, he should reciprocate. Why? It's because, you, as you just said, criminal justice reform. But guess what? They're not going to reciprocate because the green team has spoken. Do you know when you go in the black area, you see all these signs, Peel, Bird, O'Connell, Murphy. Well, in my area, you don't see those signs, Doc. <laughs> you get rid of them, period. So I'm just sitting here saying, to those who fund all these Irish candidates in our area, it's not going to happen this time. It's not going to happen. You understand what I'm saying? And I am so pissed off at these politicians, as you said. Where is, here we got, we're going to wave the north side. Kim gets the big endorsement from the congressman over there. Where are our people? Stand up. Get some backbone. You know? And she did a great job on the debate, so I don't know when they said this, this Irish, well, that Irish girl wasn't, wasn't doing nothing, man. Kim had it going on. She was very calm and cool and collective about her business. But we need to, to, to do what we need to do. I do know that the Soul Slate is going to be deploying a group, and I'm going to hook my group up with Soul Slate to make sure we do our part. All right. So keep this up, man. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, Brother Hall. Uh, and don't forget the What's Not For The Black People Voters guy will be coming out this week. Um, I'm going to go to Chestine. Chestine, you're on top of Chicago, 1690. Wow. Have you... You have some music, but stick to the politics. <laughs> okay? Listen, I, 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 I am behind you, but I usually can't call because I don't have the time. But I am a senior. Please don't talk about really experienced seniors because we do pay we did pay attention when we were you know you really made <laughs> here's what i'm saying don't vote straight democratic you have to take time to select who you want to vote for have a list of your choices for judges many black american judges were not slated by the democratic party know these things don't vote too early because if you vote too early, you may not, you may have missed some information. 
That's very. Wait until the last few day, days. Don't do this early. Things change. Thank you, sir. And no, you are not crazy. We really don't have a paper like we used to have. We have the defender that we lift. We need now to go online. These young people need to go online and and see something about these judges. If you know information, give it out on 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 WBON. I love you. I love both of you, Mays and Todd. Keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you, Chastine. And let me go to Laura. Laura, you're on the South Chicago. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Laura. I'm a senior citizen. I live in a area where, <coughs> excuse me. It's a predominant mix. So we need to put, <coughs> excuse me, we need to put literature about our judges out because they are flooding us with all that information with the white judges. Right. And I have worked on the poll many a time, and we've seen you do vote early. We mostly vote in the building. So they need to go to our churches and put some literature about Kim Fox, but most people don't care for her because they caught her in, in some lies. So, so they don't really care about her, but I'm going to make sure that I talk to my friend and have her to vote for her. But uh, we need to put some information in the churches. Please tell those people that are working on her campaign and any other the judges, they need to put some information in these churches because we do go to church. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Laura. I appreciate you. This is up Chicago 1690. We'll be back. More of The Morning Show with so, Mays Jackson coming up. Here go the thing. Can I tell you that that's happening in a lot of churches? That there is, she does have a challenge with some seniors? Just a challenge with seniors? I mean, let me not say a ton, but I am going to say that I've heard that, right? On more than one occasion, especially when it comes to letting people out, etc. I feel like the dude did focus groups, right? And I feel like he is using all the tools in the cycle. You know how like Michael Bloomberg hired a psychologist and all this stuff. Uh -huh. I feel like this dude has spared no expense in what he's doing. He has no, he has, he knows, man, I'm just saying, he's got some targeted shit going on. Um, I think, I just, I, I, I feel like they're running a national campaign on a local race. You know what I mean? Like Bernie Sanders, freaking Kamala Harris, John Legend, all of that. That's not what is going to move people. But we got, I feel like at this point, I'm through trying to tell them what to do. I'm just going to tell black people they got to get their ass out there and vote because it's real. Because y'all is real in the field. We need a hero. I'm holding out for a hero till the end of the night. He's got to be strong and he's got to be fat. And he's got to be wrong for the right for the fight. I need a hero. Take a moment, shut up. Bloomberg sent two dollars in the mail. What? <laughs> he said, "Buster." Like, I, if I was Bloomberg, I'd say, "I send people to say, look, I was gonna spend this to reach you. How about I just mail you? Could you imagine if everybody got a check in the mail from Bloomberg that he was targeting? You know, like how they say thirty-eight dollars a person or fifty dollars a person, a hundred dollars, and he sent you a check. That mm -hmm. that would be hilarious. For campaign outreach, just post a picture of your check." That would go viral quick. Rain turning to snow today. Tonight. Well, I need a hero.
We can feel it all over, people. You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. Got my co-host, Torch Told You Todd. I'm trying to work on my levels today. I'm trying to balance it out. Yesterday, every time I fall asleep watching myself, I would wake up to me screaming. So uh, I was like, uh-oh. I do like doing that. I, I, you know what? I do until I got to turn my volume up and down. It's <laughs> like I was asleep. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Hey, y'all. Um, I, I, I just want to be clear. Y'all, we saw this movie play out before. Remember everybody that stepped up for J.B. Pritzker? Remember when he was coming up talking about what happened and every time there would be a line of black people behind him to, to buttress him? I think maybe we got to get Kim like a billion dollars because then everybody run to get behind him. But I guess my question is, Todd, is what is black Chicago willing to do to support our state's attorney because I don't think that it's the Democrats. I don't think that we can anymore rely on the Democratic Party of Cook County or of Illinois to take care of our best interest politically. Right. Am I crazy with that or you think I mean I don't think they have the capability to defend black people anymore. I don't. Hmm. I mean you know as, as I, I see it we, we've given up some of the things that, that made us powerful uh, like Everyone flocks to the urban league, but they kind of let the NAACP kind of flounder when that uh, that legal arm has always seemed to be important to me. You know, and I think about, but all of our institutions, like I really think we got to bring our people back home. Like I want to have an altar call, and I want to say everybody come back home. Like y'all have been so in the white folk, been so used to trying to help the white folks accomplish their goal at all costs that you've forgotten your own people. Um, I think we got to stop putting our, our, our power in the party. Um, I think with Kim Fox, I think black folks y'all need to be watching and paying attention because all the same people that our black elected officials ran up to support are not doing the thing. J.B. Pritzker could give her $10 million without even thinking about it. But I even think twice about it. Now he probably said, I got to give you a white money manager. Because you know, ain't nobody giving no black people that much money. Right. It's, it's just like uh, the social services. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You got to get a fiscal agent. All right. Um, also, I want to point out two things about the Chicago Sun Times. First of all, I want to point out um, that the Chicago Sun Times uh, endorsed yesterday in the 9th District State Representative race. And they endorsed the SEIU candidate without saying that they were SEIU members. Oh, really? I, I saw that. I didn't know. Right. That they, 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 they didn't say that that was their candidate. They didn't say that that's the candidate they're putting millions of dollars behind. So you think about if you own the paper and then the candidate that you're supporting it, uh, the candidate that you're supporting is also the candidate that you're running. The least you can do is offer a disclaimer. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, think about the gravity of you're running a candidate. You're the newspaper. You're supposed to be factual. And then you send out an endorsement. So I just want to make sure that everybody that's paying attention in the ninth District, no shade to the sister, but, you know, my cousin is running over there, Aaron Turner. And, and the thing is, I felt like it was bogus. And then I'm going to tell you, you know what I don't like about the Sun-Times? I felt like it was disingenuous because they kicked my boy Omar to the curb, too. Right? In the 10th district. Really? 
They kicked him to the curb, and yeah, they was like, know, because yeah. it was nepotism. They said they was like, well, that he shouldn't get. So true. never mind that he's worked on. He's worked in that ward in that district. That he's volunteered. That he's worked every election since whatever, right? They say you just ain't him. I, I, you know, so I had to point that out because you know, I have you ever noticed that white liberals get all indignant because the same white liberals who do do you know? Well, I saw uh, today. I saw one of um one of the former Sun Times writers dogging the Chicago Tribune for endorsing. Guess who got the endorsement in the Tribune? Who? Richard Boykin got the endorsement for oh, Clark. Oh, I saw that, yeah. Right? And then what did happen? All the people just started jumping up and down saying, oh, the Tribune is stupid. They're right that play. They're stupid. <laughs> But they were like, I mean, this is the guy who supported this. And I mean, it was the guy who was independent. That's another race I think black people need to stick it to him with. I think we need to have. And here's the funny part. Can I tell you the tandem that would 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 run through the black community and people that got fired up about? But they, but because of white alliances, we couldn't do it. Could you imagine Kim Fox and Richard Boykin for criminal justice reform? And they got on the court ticket. On the black criminal justice. So he would be the clerk of the circuit court. Right? Kim Fox would be the Kim Fox would be the attorney. You got one minute. I got one minute, man. <laughs> Don't sweat me. Anyway, Ty. It's but, like the countdown. But think about this. The black people can't even work together because white folks say they can't. No, and they both could use each other's crazy. help. That think is, about that. Kim Fox and Richard Boykin. Both fighting to get in the courts, criminal justice, and they can't work together because the white folks said, oh, no, we gave you a white person to go with. Black folks. And, that, and, and on the north side, the white folks is crossing all the black people out everywhere. It's in writing. It's in the emails. Right, it's in the emails. <laughs> all right, Todd, and now it's time for the amazing black fact. Today, our black fact is about William Levi Dawson, born in 1886. He represented the 1st Congressional District for 27 years, serving from 1943 to 1970. He was active in the Civil Rights Movement and opposed efforts to resegregate the military. Dawson was the first African American to chair a committee, a committee on expenditures and executive departments. He graduated magna cum laude from this, attended Northwestern Law School, and plus Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. I don't even need to read that, my brother. He served as Does he know his cross date? First lieutenant in World War I. He was a vocal upon the poll taxes. Uh, Dawson was a political ward boss among the black wards, and he was offered the position of postmaster general from President John F. Kennedy, but decided that he could do more in Congress. He died in 1970 and was replaced by Ralph Metcalf. Uh, and Brother Metcalf became an independent, and he himself was uh, not part of the ward machine as a congressman. And that is our black fact for today. Hey, y'all, that's Ty Stroger with the black fact. Hey, man, you was having a hard time reading that, man. You, you know, know I, even though your head is very large, I was able to get around it and see my words. Man, I'm going to tell you what, bro. It is the Talk of Chicago 1690. We'll be back. <laughs> Mays, I've decided to get rid of the, uh, of the uh, Facebook friends who basically talk about me. <laughs> Uh, why should What's you give them? Way? Why should you give them a platform to dog you? Like yeah. I, I don't have a problem with, it with people who don't. I don't have a problem with people who disagree with me, but you're not gonna come on my page and be like, "You ain't shit, you motherfucker." Blah 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 blah. Exactly. Now, if you can be like, "I disagree with your," I enjoy verbal discourse. Yeah. I enjoy debate. I love that we disagree. But like, if you coming on my page, like, bro, first of all, every time you post. Six people see it. Every time I post, 6,000 people see it. And actually, 12,000. 
I wish I had that number, but I only got 5,000. But that's exactly right. So, yeah. I mean, we can disagree, but once you start calling me names and stuff, I've had enough of you. <laughs> they call you names? Oh, man, they say all kinds of stuff. Like who? Well, they say I'm goofy. But I, can t- I, I, I yeah. think that's not bad. I think like that's I think you I think you're quirky. I think people don't know how to use the word quirky and I think in our community goofy is is often substituted for It would quirky. be different if it was like uh he's cute and goofy, but it's dumb. You goofy. He's dumb, <laughs> he's dumb and goofy is what they're trying to say. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, yeah, I don't mind being different. Uh, as a matter of fact I actually uh Enjoy being different. Yeah, Todd, why you didn't want... I, I didn't mean to ask you that. Why you cut Bagoya bitch off on the, on the Jeff Fort... Uh, the Jeff Fort Larry Hoover question? Why? I, I mean, a lot of people want the answer to that, though. Yes, uh, and I'm, I'm totally on the other side. Uh, we are being terrorized, literally, in our neighborhoods. And they had a lot to do with it. Now, I don't know. Maybe everybody... So who gets redeemed? Hold on, and, hold on, oh, hold on. Hold on. I had more. Maybe every no, I shouldn't say maybe. Everybody should have some kind of sense of state that actually is. So I uh, so I, I I can be for that, but personally I think at this time the danger is more to themselves if they're released, but I don't think that that whole political prisoner talk, yeah, they're not political prisoners, they're uh, criminal masterminds, <laughs> that's what they are. And Children have been led down the this incredibly crazy path for decades now. It's a shame to see what's happening to them. Shame to see what's happening to the rest of us if we get terrorized by it. But there's some things that you should stay away from. Every fight isn't yours. Hmm. Yeah, right. Come back on, man. Hmm. I'll start with my computer. Ooh, ooh, uh, gotta get my Commodore back up. Today is Fat Tuesday. That's right. Today is Fat Tuesday. Oh, I'm, I'm going to go get me a pepper. I'm glad you sandwich. reminded me. I, I meant to say hello to everybody about Fat Tuesday. I got to go get me a pepper. Is she not calling us? Oh, you got to call her. Call her, call her, call her, call her. Here. It's Jahan. Calling her like a Muslim war. <laughs> And and uh, peppers and eggs is tomorrow. So. You know who has a really good who used to have a really good pepper and egg sandwich? Portillo's. That some of gum is good. Beyonce looking like somebody mama straight up. What? You think so? Yeah. She's getting older, she, I guess. She is older. Everybody's older. So she ain't got that Rihanna. Rihanna snapping on mugs. I saw that. Uh, Maywood hung a flag. No. Tell me to get my phone back. 
fashion, the Blue Line trains are running with residual delays due to earlier problems at Clark and Lake. And on the Green Line, they're running with residual delays due to earlier police activity at Clark and Lake. Now for your travel times, over on the Dan Ryan, traffic moving fine actually. And to Speaky Airman Memorial, no problems. Bishop Ford, I-80, 94 to the Ryan, 23 minutes. Stevenson, Tri-State to Lakeshore Drive, 32 in, 19 out. Over on the I didn't say nothing about looking around. The post stop is still a 44-minute commute. Stop and go between Irving. I didn't say nothing was wrong. I'm saying she's straight like a Still due to the accident where eight cars were involved. Those two left lanes are blocked. Beyonce is looking like somebody mama though. 33 minutes. Straight up. 28. And Lakeshore Drive northbound and southbound right now. It's good looking mamas today. in the world. <laughs> that ain't a bad thing. She just looks mature now. Traffic and weather. Right, like she don't look like she's getting older. The talk of Chicago. She was dressed like a mama. W is your Black History making. Oh, pepper and egg sandwich is so good. It's so good. I didn't think it was to taste that good either. That bad boy is good if the bread is right. I live my first love. So can we no candy coat it? Valentine Memories of you, you when you were mine a tarnished ring. On the tarnished chair, some sweep changing council. Long as I live, long as I live, you will be my first love, my first love, and my only love. Uh, long as I live. Long as I live, my first love will be my. Oh, will be my first love. Long as I live, you are tuned in to the Top Chicago 16:90 a.m. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, George Stroger. Hey, Todd. What? Well, you know what, son? That was the remix. Was that Kiki and uh, Avon? All right. All right. That's you know what. A bunch of people remade that. But you know what? I like that. Kiki remade it, but then didn't she stab everybody in the house or something? What? <laughs> <laughs> right. Kiki was like, I'm just a little crazy. Yeah, just a little. She reminded me of, what was that movie where the lady was waiting and she was chop cutting her um leg? She was, was that Fatal Attraction? She was like, I love you. I love you. And she had oh, the blood issues. She was nutty as a hat. Yes. Or as we say, mad as a hat. Didn't Kiki, like, didn't she tie her husband up and shoot him and do something and put him in a bathtub or <laughs> Okay. Alright. I'm even dang. I know dude like uh okay. Hey y'all. Uh you know what? I talk often about Springfield. Uh it is the hub of it is the capital of our state. Uh there's a lot going on in Springfield right now. You all may not know, but at one point I was the executive director of the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus. I also served as a lobbyist down in Springfield. Um, and although I don't often talk about my time in Springfield fondly, no, let me not say that. I had some good times. There were the best of times. Mm -hmm. There were the worst of times. Um, and I think reading the emails that I saw, we know that they were trying to make it the worst of times. Um, but while I was in Springfield, I also developed some pretty strong relationships with some legislators. Uh, in spite of the smack that I talk, who I trust, who I can rely on, who I can get information from, and, you know, uh, talk to and just really try to get some understanding. Uh, one of those legislators is on the live line with us. She is in leadership down in Springfield. It is State Representative Jahan Gordon Booth. Jahan, how you feeling this? Oh, excuse me. Representative, how you feeling this morning? Morning to Todd and to the second biggest Jay Z fan in the world. Good morning. <laughs> oh, he's not the morning. second biggest. I'm the first biggest. You got that? Out. You know what though? Jahan threw a party and she had uh, a Jay Z cover band. Do the thing. I'm, I'm thinking about doing. I'm, I'm gonna top you for my fiftieth. 
Because I'm going to try and get either Jay-Z and if I can't, I'm going to perform a whole album with a lot of it. I'm going to perform oh, a whole album. You're going to perform? I'm going to perform a whole Jay-Z album <laughs> with a lot of it. I'm telling you, it's going to be Maisie Unplugged. I'm telling you, it's going to be <laughs> off the chain. It's going to be off the chain. Hey, but you know what? One of the uh, other things that's so funny to me is oftentimes they'll be in the morning. Uh, I'll get a, a a quick text or a note, and I'm like, "Boy, you better go with that. Start that. You talking? Cause John, you actually listen to the WVON morning show. Is that true? I do. My daughter knows when it's eight oh six that she hears, "Wake up, wake up." She says, "Mommy, it's eight oh six." So that to get out the door. That is awesome. So uh, John, there's a lot going on down in Springfield, but you are um, sponsoring. Well, first of all, let me back up. I want to I want to make sure that we commend uh, Representative Gordon Booth as well as my girl Toy Hutchinson. Uh, you all, I know we have poo pooed or talked crazy about the cannabis laws in Springfield, but I will tell you that uh, there has been an evolution in Springfield. And I remember when the first cannabis laws were being passed, and there was a system systematic way of excluding black people completely. Like, don't even talk about us, but get us out. I want to commend you guys for the first time really bringing us to the forefront in this debate and trying to make something happen, uh, especially in the climate that is in Springfield. And I know you get beat up a lot, but I want to talk about how much of a difference it is in Springfield now uh, compared to when I was down there and you all taking that action. So start out. I want to start out there. Uh, Representative, what can we expect with the cannabis and making sure that black folks get on cut? I would say that, um, so thank you for that. Um, myself and Toy, as well as Heather and Kelly, we, we embarked on this work, and it's obviously the goal was to try to center uh, us in the policy uh, in a way that it one had never been done in Illinois, and to be quite honest, it had never been done that way anywhere else in the country. So we were creating what we hope um, ends up being sort of the catalyst for how we look at all industries and all policy making as it relates to creating equity and centering black people in that policy. I would say as it relates to making sure we are continued, um, that we are in this space, um, it's going to require some organization on our part and some communication, right? So what I mean by that is we have those of us that are the legislators, but then you also have the doers, right? So when we were fighting for this equity policy, we were fighting to make sure that black people have the opportunity to participate in the economic largesse of cannabis, we're literally fighting for people that we don't know. It's, it wasn't like there were people in the industry who were trying to get in the industry that were in our ears telling us, well, no, look for that, look for that. We were doing this all on our own because, as you know, that kind of organization, unfortunately, doesn't exist in our community. So we did, you know, as much as we could and went as far as we could go. But the next step of this phase is making sure that we know what's happening on the ground so those folks that are put in applications for the various um, on-ramps into the cannabis industry, we need to be hearing from them, knowing what's going on, what are some of the challenges, because any challenge that pops up, we have the ability to tweak that via legislative policy. So, you know, I've been working with some, some groups in terms of, like, finding out what some of the things that they're experiencing are, so that we have the ability to address those things and have hopefully look back three, five years from now and see a significant amount of uh, black folks participating in the cannabis industry. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Uh, if there is somebody who I believe will be on it, uh, Jahan, you are one of those people. Let me move on. Um, I want to talk about the Crown Act. What is going on with this Crown Act? And you have a bill in Springfield to... Uh, now, exactly what does that bill do? Tell me. So what the Crown Act does is it... We're looking at the Human Rights Act, and we're amending the Human Rights Act. We're adding um, hair discrimination to the Human Rights Act as things that you cannot discriminate. Uh, you cannot use hair to discriminate against people. So we, we all know um, some of the stories that have been told um, over the last few weeks, quite honestly, about ways that people have been impacted simply because they're showing up in their full, complete blackness, right, whether it be Afro, locks, Etc. Um, I ended up introducing this bill last summer. Um, I got a phone call from uh, another former executive director uh, of the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus. <laughs> 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 with the long dread, the Black Samson. 
Go ahead. Who really has been impacted um, by this policy in a very real way. And he was so um, connected to this issue. He reached out to me and said, would you be willing to um, introduce this bill? I said, absolutely, because there are so many stories um, that all of us, as black folk and even Latinx folk, right, that we carry as it relates to um, how we show up, whether it be school, whether it be work. Um, you know, I have a personal experience that I would certainly will be sharing as we roll out this um, storytelling campaign called The Politics of Hair. Um, and we have a lot of women, particularly those um, in the Chicago area, that are going to be participating um, in this storytelling campaign because it's one thing to change the policy, right? The policy measure is, you know, we, we'll see what hurdles may exist as we go down the road with this work. But I don't, I absolutely believe that we'll be able to pass this policy. The most but just as important as passing the policy is changing minds, shifting culture, um, educating and inspiring. So the goal of the, uh, of the storytelling campaign is to make sure that people understand our stories, that they know our stories, that they know why we're doing this, and that, you know, that having heard a story that maybe you don't know anything about, because if you haven't had to walk this walk, so you don't understand it, um, you don't understand the depth of the impact of it, I'm really excited about this work, and I think that we're going to have the ability to really lift our voices up in a way that um, is impactful to the culture. Representative, when we come back, I want to continue this conversation, but I also want to talk about uh, the change in culture in Springfield. Uh, there's a black awakening, in my estimation, that is happening around the country, particularly in Chicago. Um, I want to ask, how does it translate into what is happening in Springfield uh, for black people? We'll talk about it all when we come back. It is leader, State Representative Jahan Gordon Booth. She's from Peoria, but she is one of our state reps. We'll talk to her when we come back. More of The Morning Show with Ms. Uh, Jackson coming well, I up. I think it was very simple. She said... There's no black people in the cannabis industry. So she was fighting for, when they were fighting for black participation, quite frankly, a lot of that black participation was people screaming on the radio or screaming out in the street saying it ain't none. But there were no black people in the business who were saying, this is what we got to fight for. This is what we got to bring. Quite frankly, we don't lobby. And I didn't see Carrie on that list. Watch, I'm about to be late. All right, y'all, take a moment to share the broadcast. What up, Brandy? Tell my boy Dominique I said, wake up! Chat, I mean, Todd, it's your time, man. It's you and Sonia. Yeah, I was looking at the uh, wipe the cold out my eyes. Mm -hmm. I was looking at something about uh, the elections, and it was uh, a post about George McGovern running against Richard Nixon as a Democrat, and I think that would be uh, seventy-two, and he got trounced. He got stomped on. And he, he was a bit of a, uh, he had some socialist tendencies. He wanted free care, free medical care for all. Uh, and the person's post I, I was reading was saying that they see Bernie as like the new McGovern. A lot of young people were supporting McGovern. <coughs> Just like so many young people are supporting Bernie. But I, 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 you know, that's the problem. I, is I see it as a, I'm not a card carrying Democrat, but I truly don't see any, anything out of Trump that I think is positive. So the Democrats uh, seem to be so fractured. I don't see how they can win. Now I did ask my son, who is 20. What happens if Bernie doesn't win the primary for you? And he said he's, he's not voting for Trump. He's going to vote for somebody, but uh, he's not voting for Trump. So, but I think a whole bunch of young people are going to say the system rigged and just walk away. And if it is Bernie, 
I was reading a post from a friend that's the other you? day. Oh, that's your baby. An older uh, white guy. And on his post, oh, look at the baby. He and all of his people, and when I say his people, his friends, you know, people, his peers, they were all like, yeah, I don't think I can vote for Bernie. So I think it's going to be very hard for the Democrat, whoever he is, to be able to gather enough support from everybody. It's sad because this guy needs to go. Shame on me, on you, not me. What's up, Swill? Yeah. You gotta go over to the office today. Can I stop by the house? I got a lot of stuff I need you to pick up and take over there. We got chairs coming and everything. I want to do the set. We also need to know what the uh, set for Tanil's team is tomorrow so we can put it together. You are tuned in to Tough Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Tosh Trojan. Yeah, we are talking to State Representative Jahan Gordon Booth. Wait a minute, do I? How do I do that? Am I supposed to say Leader Jahan Gordon Booth? Or am I supposed to say State Representative? Or am I supposed to say Leader State Representative? You know how y'all got the church? You know how the church titles be Reverend Doctor Doctor Reverend. How do I do that? How do I? How do I address you officially? Well, my mama named me Jahan, <laughs> which is always appropriate. <laughs> but if I was trying to acknowledge you officially, so as I open my intro, you know, when I get my big interviews, like one day when I'm super famous, I'm going to be like, <laughs> and next on the show is state representative and leader in the house, Jahan Gordon Booth. Uh, uh, let me ask a question. Speaking of that, you know, I said leader. Uh, any aspirations? You know, there's a lot of stuff going on down in Springfield. Uh, I, you know, I've been tossing your name around since my man Art Turner is bouncing on us. I've been tossing your name into the hat as the future speaker of the house. Uh, Jahan, what is going on in Springfield? It seems like things are changing a little bit down there. Um, when I was down there, I was, I was very displeased with the fact that I felt like there was... The, the, that black folks just went along. It seems as though things are changing a little bit. Talk to me about the dynamic that is happening in Springfield right now for black folks. Um, things are things are definitely different. Um, I came to Springfield in January of '09, and uh, you know, just looking at and it, it, it seems it's been incredibly fast. But just looking at the the perspective that um, legislators fight from. The thought that the Black Caucus, I mean, because I hear all the chatter often, and there is this idea that Black Caucus members don't fight for uh, black communities, and that is the furthest thing from the truth. But what I would say that I'm seeing more now is the ability to use social media to assist in organizing and leveraging um, a larger strategy. Um, before, you know, that did not exist, folks like yourself, uh, with the kind of microphone and what you have the ability to bring attention to that did not exist before. And so I think there's this, there's this strong belief that we are all we have, that we all we got, right? And if we don't collectively put our muscles together, then, um, we're going to continue to keep seeing these stats from our community that are quite honestly embarrassing. Um, so we fight and we fight every day. We fight, um, for the collective interests of the black community from, um, economic inclusion to criminal justice to education to health care disparities the whole gamut um, we have 22 members in the house 31 including the sen members of the senate so it's 31 members strong um, in the house of representatives in the senate that are fighting for black issues every day now let me ask you uh rep because uh, you know what i don't know i, you, I know you gotta read capital facts um but yesterday in capital facts and i'm gonna talk about this because it 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 it's disconcerting for me personally, but it's disconcerting at a larger level. So yesterday in Capital Facts, uh, Rich Miller reported, and then I went and researched, uh, that the speaker, one that a lobbyist, Tom Cullen, uh, had taken Facebook posts that we had had. I uh, remember during the Mike uh, Brown era, and all of the Black Caucus was trying to figure out ways to make sure that something like that didn't happen in Chicago. Lo and behold, we have a McDonald right after that. But... 
what we saw was Representative Turner had introduced a bill to try and prevent, uh, or to try and introduce a special prosecutor. And what we saw was that there was a series of legislation, machinations, uh, conversations between Tim Mapes, Mike McLean to silence me, but then to put it to weaken our criminal justice reform efforts at a time when it was at the peak. How can we trust the people in leadership in Springfield when we have written proof of how they do us? Well, I would say this. Um, I have not seen. I have not seen the article yesterday. My. Um, my chief of staff fell down a flight of stairs Ooh. and split her, split her kneecap. So I was with her most of the day yesterday. So I did not read Capital Facts yesterday. But what I can say is that specifically as it relates to criminal justice reform or any other issue impacting black people, I mean, you said it yourself. The, the folks that are in the General Assembly now, um, highly professional um, set of folks who came down with the specific interest of changing the dynamic of the way that things um, had been done in the past. I think that we have to be mindful about how legislative policy actually happens. Um, it doesn't mean that because someone, uh, because it, again, I can't really speak to the, what you're speaking about. Cause I didn't Why not do this? Well, I let's do this, because I don't want to really jam you, cause, because, because I think you got to see it before okay. you do so let's do this because i because you didn't see it and i don't want you to get off on it uh i'll say let's let let you see it and then we'll talk about it at a different time i think the thing that i want to make sure though uh representative is that can we trust our legislators to fight i mean like when what happens when madigan say hey y'all can't do this but the black folks want something how do we ensure that our interests are being are being pushed forward and how can we support you all to make sure that when you are fighting for us that we can get you back the black caucus is always i want to be always fighting for black communities what i think is missing is the connectivity between the work that we do and the community leaning in and supporting that so for example right let's, let's think about you know think of, let's, let's think about the interests right that exist in that space those interests show up, right? Like you have legislators that may be inclined and leaning towards one issue more than another. The, the various groups that support those interests, they're going to make sure that they have those legislators back. And so as it relates to the policy that we want, how bad do we want it? Are our communities showing up? Or is it supposed to be the legislator's job by themselves to fight for that issue without any backup? So we are we are... We are waiters and waitresses, right? Our community mm -hmm. is the real muscle. That's how we're able to get things done. It's, and, and we know um, the position that we play in democratic electoral politics, that's our power. So it's one thing to actually show up and to vote and make sure that we're getting the right people in office, but it's another thing to continue to stay involved and engaged. Um, that's why I like what you're doing in terms of like making people conscious about the process because we have to have more people that are willing to lean into this process with us and engage in order to make sure that the things that we deem as a priority I gotta stop you. done. I, I gotta, gotta stop you. So y'all gotta make some more millionaires so we can afford to come down to Springfield. They all come down because they got private jets and money and all that. But this is State Representative Jahan Gordon Booth. I'm gonna tell you what, if there's somebody down in Springfield fighting on black people's issues, she is one of them in the forefront. Uh, Representative, we gotta have you guys come back more so we can start to re rebuild this bridge between our communities. South Chicago 1690, we'll be back. The talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation. Well Six done, made song. Thank you. I think they say, are you engaged? Don't nobody got the touch. There's not a black people lobby, right? It's like, so Catholic Charities. And, and what that would mean is that there was somebody who was paid so they can pay their bills, who was down the street for all the time. Exactly. But that, and that's my point. So, like, I actually wanted to do that. Like, have the black people's lobby. Like we got a person in Springfield that if anything come up, that mug is walking up and he got, you know he represents 50 organizations from business to politics to whatever. And they come over and they say, damn, black policy is, they, they just decided they ain't in with, in with that. They slipping against it. And right. that means that it's 50 people slipping against it. They got all these powers in the back. I think that there is a, so, I think that they know how to fight a certain way. And they, I, what, I, what I think, I think 
when she was like, we're waiters and waitresses, they don't. I was be- thinking, now you're bigger than that. <laughs> but they don't believe that, right? That sounds good on there. I'm saying like, and I could pick up the phone. Jahan is great people. I, I used to say we are tools, screwdrivers, swords, all that kind of stuff. But the people have to, to pick us up and use us. Except for the fact of the matter is, like, I think that unless you are part of a approved group or brought by an approved set of whatever, like the dog and pony show with the lobbyists, then I don't think it's that way. See, I feel like the, uh, I told you, I feel like our elected officials think they're royalty. And the way the lobbyists treat them in Springfield. Oh, it's like royalty, yes. Right. And then when they come home and you ain't like, ooh, I'm happy to see you. It's like, man, they like, man, that nigga. And so it's easy to marginalize. Well, no, I, I'd say the problem is for some and not all, the it's such a 180 turn. It's like your royalty here, but when you're home, it's you ain't done nothing. You ain't nobody. No, so I, but you don't even off. see. I feel like that's only if you're looking at social media, like because don't nobody see they state rep or they state senator unless they. Go. And I haven't been to a place where I've seen a state rep or a state senator come in. That's why I said, and people ain't like woo, and they ain't like let me take a picture. Oh, we love you. Oh, you cool. Oh, you whatever. Because the state rep and state senator is usually only going someplace where they did some shit for somebody, <laughs> right? So they only going to safe landing spots and they pick their situation. I think that there is, when you're in Springfield, um, I think that when you are in Springfield, the white folks spoil you, and the black folks ain't got nothing for you. Like, the black lobbyists ain't got nothing, the black lobbyists ain't taking you out to dinner every night. So when you go to all the restaurants, the black lobbyists ain't because they ain't got no damn expense account. No. Right? So the reason that, again, the Roosevelt Group wins all the time, for everybody all the time, is because they give a black person an expense account. Myself included. Now you got the expense account, and most of us ain't really had the opportunity. So now you can go to any dinner, any place, anytime, whatever you want to do. The black lobbyist that is just down there lobbying, he don't have a card. So he can't take you to dinner. And, or if he got, he don't got an expense account, he gets reimbursed for his expenses. So now you go out and you eat $1,000. I got to wait three weeks to get that back. And that's Yikes. my rent. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I, again, I think like. I don't, like, I don't think anybody has ill intent. I just think that, like, when you say they got to show up. It's like nobody black that I know has the ability to show up. And then you ain't going to hire the black lobbyists because the black people. I told you Mary Flowers and uh, Monique Davis would be like, I'm not mean with you, but give me your credit card. Or we're going to have dinner. We're going to charge up all this shit. We still ain't going to talk to you. But I still got to but I still got to do it because I can't have her going back saying. Right? right, and so what they do is they make black people jump through hoops. Man, I came into man, raised Rita Mayfield thirty grand. She freshman, thirty grand, and then she act like she mad at me because we raised the money. Right now it's like so now you want to be. It's like you're damned if you do, you damned if you don't. There's not rich, like there's not enough respect among black people. Right. Just look like to me. Every black legislator should be like, don't nobody, don't nobody, what's up? If White, come see go me. to heaven, got a punch 47. I don't know. Boykin? Oh, oh, oh it's got a, a thing no, on it. was jingle, yeah. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> if you go to heaven, got a punch 47. I'll hear it when I listen to Perry Show. I got cross on the line. We're doing 15. We're not doing the whole half. Um... Yeah, I. It's like, and and almost they become oblivious to it, right? They become so used to not seeing black lobbyists for real. Yeah. That it's like. I mean, it's like what you were saying about the uh, the rich people, the businessmen, 
and the elected officials. Because you don't want to deal with me because you think I'm powerless, I become powerless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think... I just, I, I feel like we don't understand Numerous courses at the The ecosystem, how to create an ecosystem And so That's a good, good point that, um, That's what it is it's And I think like I think it is their job To come back and tell us Like I feel like she was like is it We vote but I feel like the reason I vote is because so you can go to Springfield And when you come back from Springfield You should make it your business to be visiting your community, telling them what you did the whole year. Oh yeah, right. I'm sure people. Are. I had town hall. I'm sure everybody has town get hall. The university. My part is getting people to come to your town hall. My publishers clear. And getting other people to work with you. Like I went to a town hall for Jesse Jackson Jr. once. But hell, I didn't expect them to invite me anywhere where I could speak. <laughs> uh, you know, allies and all that kind of stuff. Problem is, we don't like to be allied with each other. People be like, Maze, keep going, and guess what? People be like, keep going until my rent is due. Six minute commute. I was just thinking, like, I'm really bothered by that email. I'm bothered by it by all the way from the top to the bottom. Really? I don't know why. You didn't expect that out of them? Um, I mean, I expect them to try to stop everything. Uh, if there's one thing I've I realized about uh, uh, the Green Team's organization is they don't like to let anything slip by. Nothing. From the Infinity Studios at WVON. I don't have to tell them if there's a pin to pick it up. They don't pick that pin up. You're listening right. to The Morning Show with Mays Jackson on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Rise and shine. I'm tired of being people's political mistresses. Yeah, you don't really like me in the background? Right. Like, y'all, everybody want to be. That's my name. Meet me at them. You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, George Stroger. Gotta say what's up to the rest of the morning show team. What's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom. As well as Miss Sonia Escobar. She's the musical conductor of the Soul Plan. But hey, y'all, you know what? The, we, we had a big day yesterday. And we did not handle our layover in Washington, D.C. as we do. So back with us today is Miss Amisha Cross with the Washington, D.C. update. Amisha, how you doing today? Pretty good, pretty good. Prepping to go to South Carolina, actually. Prepping to go to South Carolina. Oh, so you wait. So what are you doing? Are you on the It's a presidential election going on. Play some golf. Hey, so Amisha, Amisha, do you play golf? 
I watch golf happen. <laughs> <laughs> I drive the beer cart. I look for the beer cart when I go out there, but I don't drink, I don't uh, golf. But so what are you going to South Carolina for? Are you going to actually go to the debate tonight or are you yes, going to observe the debate and um and I'm actually covering some of the some of the town halls that they're doing locally as well. Okay, so talk to us. Uh so it seems like uh Bernie Sanders is on the path to the nomination. I don't know if he can be stopped. It seems like the Democrats are doing everything to do so. So let's start here. Uh, we got uh, the the I the wait a minute the Vegas caucus. The results of that. Then moving on to South Carolina. Is this Uncle Joe's last stand? If he doesn't win South Kakalaka, is he in trouble? And I guess my question is, if that be the case, will Bernie Sanders destroy the Democratic Party as we know it? Let's go. You pick where you want to start. Absolutely. So I'll start with the recent results in Nevada. Um, there shouldn't have been anything extremely surprising out of Nevada. We've had months where um, Sanders was poised to take the lead there. Um, one of the, the biggest shocker, I think, was the sheer amount of young people, those under 35, who came out, as well as the percentage of Latino voters who had come out in Nevada. And we haven't seen those numbers previously. So I think that that uh, really tipped the scales for him because I, I think, as your, as your listeners probably know, Sanders has vested a lot in the Latino community, specifically more than any of the other candidates combined. So he thinks that right now he's seeing the fruits of his labor. And if you're paying attention, um, in his victory speech, he had already left Nevada. He gave his victory speech from the state of Texas. And he did direct appeals to Latino voters there as well. Right now, there are over 8 million Texas voters, Latinos, who are eligible to vote, who are not registered. So he's going to run into a bit of a pickle as it relates to some of the Latino vote, unless we have a lot of outreach campaigns to actually register those who are, um, who are U.S. citizens, who are eligible to vote, who have not taken part in the system. In addition to that, I think that it's important to note that Instead of what we saw with a lot of the candidates spending a lot of time in Iowa, um, what Bernie Sanders did was invest a lot of his people on the ground in Nevada. So this was really just a, a culmination of all of his work in that state. The test is going to be whether or not he can make this work through the next, through Super Tuesday. Because again, he's betting on two groups that historically do not come out in large numbers. This could be a, you know, a different type of election where you do see younger people come out in droves. You do see Latino voters come out in droves. But that's a gamble uh, just looking at history. I, you know what? I don't, I've never, I, I, I don't believe until I see it. I got a question, uh, Amisha. Do, is there any truth to this uh, Donald Trump telling his people to vote for Bernie Sanders? Have we seen any evidence of that? Donald Trump has made that statement in, at several rallies. The, the, the issue here is that in the caucuses, unless you are a registered Democrat, the majority of caucuses, you can't vote anyway. So for registered Republicans, those who are largely Trump supporters anyway, they're not going to be able to change over um, their status to vote in a Democratic primary. Got it, got it. What about in a place like South Carolina? In a place like South Carolina, where the black vote reigns supreme, it, in the general, we know what's going to happen. <laughs> but right now, in the um, in, in the Democratic primary, South Carolina is poised to go Biden, and poised to go Biden in big numbers. Okay, talk to me about uh, what is Warren is, is a close second. Though. Warren is a close. She's still crazy though. To me, she got to do something about them close ups in the hair. Let me ask. Oh, was that feminist? Well, I'm be in trouble for that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just, just saying, saying she still looks just a little bit bad to me. Uh, what? Let me ask you another question, Amisha. Um, what is? What about Joe Biden? Uh, uh, so, some, uh, what about Joe Biden? And what happens if he does not dominate in South Carolina? Is it a wrap? It would be, however, um, all things remain in constant. Joe Biden is holding it over 50% in South Carolina. I don't see this going any other way. As people have stated, South Carolina is his hospital of sorts. He will do amazingly well in South Carolina. I'm not worried about him in South Carolina. I'm more concerned with what it's going to look like when he goes into Super Tuesday. Um, Joe Biden has really low poll ratings amongst Latino voters. He's not doing that much better amongst white voters. His his name to his claim to fame right now is black voters so if the black vote remains consistent then yes but that black vote is also siphoned depending on the age group older black americans appreciate joe biden stand by the nostalgia believe in you know his his legacy as vp to president obama younger african americans do not and we see that break got it uh on the flip side amisha what's going on with president trump besides letting out rob Boyevich? speaking of that he did let out rob Boyevich <laughs> and a series of pardons um, what's going on with the president? 
um, the president was in India, and he received an, an amazing um, an, an, an amazing welcome in India. Wait a minute. He got, see, I'm telling y'all. See? Go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So the president was in India. Um, he he took pictures in Taj Mahal. Um, he received a hero's welcome in India. Um, and there's a lot of people wondering, in terms of a foreign policy perspective, what is actually going to happen because he has now promised them arms. Um, we're, we're seeing a lot of military funding and military weaponry go to India. Um, what that looks like long term and why now? All right. And Amisha, uh, what are you hearing about the pardon? It, it depends on who you ask. They think that there's a, there's a heavy piece of inside ball for Chicagoans being excited about it. Outside of Chicago, you don't necessarily have, and on the national scale, you don't see people really excited about it because of um, because of Blago's history. Um, I think that there are a lot of folks who believe that when you uh, when you try to sell a Senate seat, you deserve what's coming to you, and and. And they see it as this is just something that President Trump did to poke a needle in the eye of President Obama and the um, and the Democrats in one of the strongest Democratic-led states in the country. Got it, got it, got it. And if you were calling the race today, Amisha, who's going to win for the president? The big race. Whew, if I was calling the race today, you know it. Go ahead and say that's it. Tough. I, I, I don't. I don't <laughs> think with, with the incumbency with the incumbency advantage. If I was calling the race today, I would say Trump takes it. Again. Uh, uh. It's very hard to beat an incumbency advantage, especially when you have an economy that stands as what America is right now, and it's not poised to take a fall for another year and a half. It's going to be tough. Hey, that is Amisha Cross with the DC Update. Amisha, tell people how they can keep up with you. Absolutely. You can find me on all things social at, at Amisha Cross. All right, that's Amisha Cross. Amisha, we'll talk to you next week. We'll be back after traffic and the weather. WVON. Future college student, the power is within you. The power to live your. Oh my God. <sighs> ROC, we running this rap shh. Y'all got the camera Taj, we talk to people. <laughs> Stephanie Tressel says, Taj Felder, Facebook must have unfriended friended us accidentally. No worries, I put in another friend request. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, you know what? She don't, she, that's one, like, that's one of the people. God's just like in there, like yeah, I, right? Like you, you're appealing. You're not going to get famous off of me trying to appeal to white people, right? You trying to appeal to you're pandering to white folks and be like, do you see this crazy Mage Jacks? Yeah, you better get to stop tagging me. Yeah, yeah, I'd had enough of that stuff, so I was like, okay, let's just move it along. And besides, I didn't want to hear all the rest of the crazies on our page. That's crazy, Veronica Taylor, I saw, I found a picture of you from the, um, from the Idic Gidic fashion show at DuSable Museum. I got a picture of you and Dawn modeling. It's funny. I want something good. I feel like I want a steak for breakfast. <laughs> huh? 
I said, I feel like I want a steak for breakfast. You know, every once in a while I feel like that. And then after eating, I'm like, man, I'm stuck. Man, who want to fuck with us? Ashes to ashes, that's the dust. You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. I'm a co-host, Tula Stroger. Hey, Ty. I'm back on my, um, I'm about to get back on my soapbox. Ty, what are we going to do? Okay, so I was thinking about before we, we had, we talked to Amisha Cross. Yeah. I was thinking about this, about what would inspire black people in this election. You think the presidential race will get black people excited? Are black people excited about the presidential race? Uh, not to my knowledge, at least it appears that they're excited enough for me. Um, because I'm, you know, I'm totally anti-Trump. Okay, so I think that Trump has worn everybody down to the nub, right? I think you're not gonna see a big old, big old, big. You'll see it in the suburbs, but I don't think you'll see. And I, my concern about the turnout in the suburbs is, right, in the white suburbs, is the white suburbs. When white people have an option to go against black people, they go against. Right? Yeah. So, I'm concerned. I am concerned that the Democratic Party ticket is uninspiring. Right? Like, who are black, who on that ticket are black people going to vote for? Kim Fox. I'm with you on that. I think, is Kim Fox a driver to the election, to the polls right now? Mm. Is that like our, like, like my question would be, are black people right now lathered up and like, we got to get to the poll and vote for Kim Fox? Are our seniors running to volunteer? Are, 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 do we have volunteers? Um, is the fundraising rolling in? Where is our operation? Are the community, I mean, I know we do churches and I know everybody goes to visit churches on Sundays. And you know, I see that, right? But I, I mean, I've been seeing the Democratic Party go to churches, man, and only be the, the only people being in the audience is the, is the candidates. <laughs> so I guess my question is, is uh, what what can we do? Black folks, give me a call, 312-374-8130, 312-374-8130. I am concerned about this election. Looking at the polling numbers, right? Kim Boss is in a dead heat. With Bill Conway on right on her tail, I didn't think, I, I honestly did not think this was even possible. Now it may be a wake up call that we need to jump on. I want us to be inspired to figure out how do we get. Uh oh, I've been around. I've been in this. I, I've seen this. This is nothing new. When black people get in trouble, a certain amount of black people will peel off, but more than the majority of the white people will. Yeah, but oh. Gotta go. Hey, here's the white guy. I'll take this one. Hi, right, I'm white. You know, like, remember that thing they had the, uh, hi, right, I'm white. You're white. I'm white, too. Well, uh, let's all get together. Well, my yeah. question becomes, though. That's exactly how it works. But, but what does it mean for us in criminal justice reform? And see, my thing is, who, what are we going to do? Like, can we organize outside? Like, are we going to do citywide canvas programs can we do a, a social media campaign i don't know if you remember when jack o'malley won no i don't yeah so cecil party was the uh, state's attorney he had been appointed because richard 
uh, Tim Daly had become the mayor. They, uh, some things come out about Cecil Park T. I I can't remember exactly what, but, you know, maybe didn't pay this, maybe, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was negative press, Jack O'Malley, no, is that, is that how that worked, Jack O'Malley? Yes, Jack O'Malley crushed him. And then Pat O'Connor ran against him and he crushed him. Jack O'Malley was like the standard bearer for sending people to prison. He was that old school, we want to send people to prison till they're like 40, that's when they come out, they'll be too tired to do anything. Mm. I think there's a lot of people who still are looking for that standard bear. Um, what I, my concern sometimes is that the, that the criminal justice reform message doesn't necessarily resonate with our seniors. Right? Like, I don't think our seniors, I don't think that black seniors who are more inclined to turn out for voting, I don't think that, I think safety is their issue. And I think sometimes it's it's it the message fights itself. It does because I say a lot of them feel like they are being terrorized, and they don't want to have to close their shades and not look out the window because somebody's doing something and that brings uh, violence to their neighborhood. But if they say anything about it, then they get they fear that somebody's going to come knocking on their door and threaten them. Mm. And then. Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm nervous. Let me go to the phone lines. Tommy, you on the top Wait, Tommy? Well, let me say it from the halls of Hollow Saturday is once again, I uh, needed to straighten out things in Lunchville. <laughs> I love you guys. I listen to you every day. I don't call in because I just say, man, you know, you always ask what's in it for the black people, and I would like to start with Saturday for once because I have never seen a bunch of people who are stupid than the ones that are in the city of Chicago. And Todd, you never were in trouble. It was just an absolute epitome of stupidity that they did what they did to you. And then what makes it so worse, what is so absolutely incredible, is now that here we are, about to go into the election cycle, you have the audacity for someone to tell you that a woman like Kim Fox would be in the dead heat. I tell you what, here we go again with this nonsense with Harry and, and his other character. And in my day, what really makes it so bad is when do we get tired of being posted people for everything wrong but never fixing nothing? So let me get right there, man, because now if I stay out here too long, it's a pandemic of stupidity. And I just have to end with how damn dumb can we be? Goodbye. Thank you, Tommy. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Frank. Frank, you're on Talk Chicago. Hey, good morning, my brother, Minister Mays, my brother, Ty Sturgeon. Good morning. Hello, my brother. I love that brother, Tommy. He, he, I hate coming over behind him. He is something <laughs> else. <laughs> he know he be right, too. I'm going to tell you something. Are these the same line polls that said that uh, uh, Tony Preckwood was leading more life with in all the wars ever since she got in? She was front runner. I never saw a poll that said that. I'm just so and clear. The, and <laughs> oh, I did. Yes, yes, sir. We, and when all the smoke cleared and dust, and dust settled, Joy Lightfoot whacks her blood in all 50, all 50 wars. This is the oldest trick in the book to discourage us from voting. Hmm. Kill Fox is going to win this by a landslide. What we should be worried about is reaching out to South Carolina and getting into that Jim Clyburn, the Django type house Negro that may suppress our brothers and sisters come out there and voting for this guy who, with the revolution, who talking to Jesus Christ right stuff, and Michael King Jr. right stuff, and uh, uh, King Solomon right stuff, and let these young people get out the way, you know what I'm saying, and do their thing, man. This guy got more gray hair in his head than with Susan. Because that's how it must go. Thanks, get out these young people's way. Thanks, Thank Frank. You. Hey, uh, I just say this, man. Uh, first of all, Frank, I don't think that's part of our problem. Worrying about what's going on in South Carolina instead of worrying about what's going on in Chicago. This is a local Cook County race. Um, I don't think that I don't think we should take this stuff as a grain of salt. And the reason I'm bringing it up and letting you know it's so close is because your vote will count, and we do need to get people out. And I think we need to start. Like, have we all done our part? Have you taken? A Kim Fox message and shared it with 10 people. Have you called a friend? Have you done your friends and family program? I don't want to look up on March 18th and be saying what they didn't do. What can we do? It's the Talk of Chicago 1690. Hey, y'all, you know what? You know, I have been talking about what happens when you go to a school 
right, that doesn't value black history. Well, what would you do if I told you I have a young man that's going to be coming to talk to us, uh, and he did a project about the surviving, uh, the vanishing black man, and the teacher told him she'd prefer that he did something on blackish. Hey, y'all. It's Chicago 1690. We'll be back. Live from the WVON Newsroom. Here's... Are they here? Okay, this kid's name is Miles. I know Miles. Huh? I know Miles. You know Miles Aronovitz? No. <laughs> I know uh, Miles Colvin. He's uh, Marlowe's man. I know Miles. Uh, oh, Miles worked for us. Miles was good. What did he wind up doing? Is he a cop now? Oh, I don't know. I didn't ask Marlo. I don't got an update on old Marlo. Miles? Nice. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Grab a seat right there. Hi, Todd. Miles. Hi, Todd. Nice meeting you, Miles. You ready? I am. All right. Now tell me about your project. Okay, so just so you know, you're on Facebook Live the whole time. This is your camera right here. Um, we are going to talk about your project, right, and what you talked about. I'll talk, I'm going to set it up, and then you'll tell me about, his name is... Rob Welch. Rob Welch, and you're going to tell us about his vanishing black man? Yes. Okay, cool. All right. So, so when you're talking to the microphone, you want to lean right into it, you want to get up on it, okay? Okay. How are you? Did you get did you you get to play hooky today? Or you gotta go to school after this? You know, I have to go to school after this, but luckily I think my schedule allows me to not have to go back till eleven forty five. Oh, that's good. lucky you, it's lucky gr- you. It's great being a high school senior, but you know, <laughs> you know worst part is actually having to you know still go. <laughs> Where are you going to college? Uh, I'm going to Ohio State. Oh, uh, which Ohio I am. State? Yes, yeah. That's all right. I know, man. I was telling his dad he got to go to U of I, and they were like, that's his dream school, but he's a pilot. He's going to be a pilot. Pre-engineering and aviation, yeah. Really? Yeah. You're braver than I am. Mm. I keep my feet on the ground all the time. (laughs) It's funny. My father said he had a chance to learn how to fly when he was a kid, and his mother wouldn't let him. My uncles both had a... We were at our last family reunion. They were telling us about their plane that they had when they were, like, 30. Like, they are, like, they were like, and they were saying how they were flying into different towns, and then it ran out of gas, Uh-oh. and they had to. It was a crazy story, and I'm like, really, I have uncles that had a plane in the <laughs> '40s who were flying around and ran out of gas. Yeah, that's a move. Uh, all right. And Miles, you are a senior at Latin School. Yes. Okay. And Miles, tell us how we got here. How did we find, so tell us, you know what, I'll have you tell the story on air, so we'll save it until you get on air. Do you play, do you, are you in, what other, what are your extracurricular activities? Extracurricular, I'm involved with a band, I play alto, tenor, sax. Ah, I used to play E-flat alto. Ah, you know, I I like alto a lot, but I play tenor mainly, I I play um, alto in my school's concert and jazz band, Mm -hmm. and then I play tenor in in my um, separate sort of rock, pop, jazz, fusion band, sort of all three, the, the, just the mix of everything. Um, I love it a lot. Um, I'm a pilot, so I, I I'm in the middle of flight training for college. Uh, I really want to be a pilot when I when I uh, graduate. That's I think the career path I want to do. But I think those are the two main extracurriculars I focus on the most. Okay. Most. All right. Forever you could win. We I can play basketball with some guys from Latin. When I was young at these things, I was young. And they were even young. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not Rob Welch. 
Rob Welch is a friend of their family and Miles did a school project on Rob Welch. The teacher was not wanted, she wanted more hip hop de bop. She wanted some Jay Z. She wanted some Jigga Man. She wanted some blackish. And so here again, one of those scenarios where we have. It's Hollywood Shuffle. Right. Hi. I'm, and I can be a. But I, I think the key. So here's my thing. So he got not downgraded, but he did not. His project got a D. Right? Now, if he would have gotten a. He's an A student. Right. He gets a D for a project that he can interpret himself. Right. And he yeah. does the, the, it's the response to a vanishing black man. So now my question becomes, how did it, how you get a D on a Black History Month project at Latin School? Now, I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to jam him up because he's a student. But I thought that what would be apropos would be to allow him to give his project or give us an overview of his project on air so that maybe the people on his part of town, on the north side, that didn't understand how valuable or what he was doing is or how much it means. And I just thought, like, if they're going to snuff a brother... Look, we had we just talked about a school where the kids... They, the teachers were telling the kids to do a Black History Month project on animals from Africa. And here we got a young brother that did a project on the vanishing black man and art and expanded. And they jammed him and they gave him a D. Mm -hmm. So you got an A for coloring a monkey. But you get a D for exploring... Yeah, so I thought that it was a good opportunity to give him an opportunity. I just thought if 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 you were willing to do that and then be in that environment, and I told you, I have a special place for that environment when you're the only one of a few, and you're trying to explain to somebody else is telling you how to to reinterpret your race, right? Right? And he's in high school, right? And honestly, one thing I would say for for certain is despite all of this, despite how, I guess, a, a rude of awakening this has been for who I am, I would still do it again. The education itself is fine. It's just, there is a severe problem with PWIs in the United States and controlling students. I feel like I'm not cared for as a black student. Go ahead, put the headphones on. Yeah. And so, we're about to come live. Get ready. We're gonna tell me And Lori, I know background. You are tuned in to the Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, George. Uh, I love you, Roberta Fly. Uh, don't tie. You're not gonna have a Roberta Fly concert. Uh, no, but you didn't not. even sing the dude's part, good. man. Why are you like singing part, man? <laughs> you know what? That's how I feel about Mariah. And, and I am, uh, I am happy with my masculinity. I don't need to prove that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You need to prove to that. I heard. You know, I, I heard. I heard. I said, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Because I was just thinking about that shower, shower story, and the guy's trying to get you to talk oh, to the mic. Oh my goodness! All right, look. That's look. right. Hey, you know, <laughs> this week has been used now. You can't use that. <laughs> I can only tell the shower story once a week. Once a week. All right, well, we have company anyway, so I'm not going to tell it. Hey, y'all. Um, you know what? Um, you're going to, some of you may be like, what? where did we get this segment? So, I, first of all, let me set this up. I have a young gentleman uh, in studio with me. His name is Miles Aronovitz. Now, Miles is a senior at Latin school. You know, that's one of them super extra, extra. Fancy, <laughs> right? Fancy. You know, that mean your parents got a grip, yeah. right? Because, because you know, I don't even think they got scholarships up there. But that's a whole different story, I think they do. <laughs> right? But you know, we were talking earlier this week about the story of Young Black History Month at Sutherland School in Beverly, and we were talking about how the teachers there who and. Sutherland is a school that everybody was aspiring to get in. It's a public school people aspire to get their kids in. Uh, the teachers had a Black History Month program or lesson, and they wanted black kids to study animals 
in Africa as the Black History Month study. I was outraged. Then I get the story of Miles, who, now, first of all, I just need to tell y'all, he's pretty advanced. Uh, pretty advanced. I think his vocabulary might be better than mine right now. Um, but. What? Bowling, bro? <laughs> You know what I forgot? I didn't go to Bowling, but I, I will, will be even. Yeah, um, but Miles is a senior at Latin School in Chicago, and he did a, a Black History Month project, uh, and he got a deal. Now Miles is an A student, but you know sometimes you don't get your, you get your. Sometimes everybody has a hiccup, but in this case, Miles, I don't, did, you, did you make a mistake and, and actually do Croatia instead? Did you? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, did you forget? Did you? So, Miles, tell us your story. Tell us what happened at your school. So, um, first say hi to everybody. Hello, hi, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's Miles. Go ahead. Um, so, at my school, we have this English elective. It's called Black Voices in America. It's a it's a chance to study, evaluate, and understand Black creative his, um, history history in English, uh, writers, just poets, and just black creatives in a high school setting. You know, to begin with, that's something really incredible because not many schools would offer an in-depth course, in-depth course about black literature and black creativeness to begin with. And so I immediately signed up because I was like, yeah, that's, that's a chance to finally understand more and more about, about our, our, our creativeness and where that comes from. And um, it was the end of the semester. This was um, November, December. And the final project for uh, the class was to engage, simply to engage with a black voice in the city or in some, some man manifestation of a of manner, whatever it would be, you know, a, a, a interview, a, a movie album review, sort of just any way you can to engage with a black voice. And a lot of classmates did stuff online. A lot of people, they did a, l a lot of great things. But I really wanted to try to, you know, satisfy conveying a message of creative. I'm a musician, I play saxophone, so there's that type of creative. And so a family friend of ours, Rob Welch, he, uh, he is a visual artist, black visual artist who lives in Bronzeville. And I interviewed him about his, um, collage work, The Vanishing Black Man, and I got a D on it. So How do you get a D on The Vanishing Black Now, first of all, let me ask a question. Was this a black teacher? This was not a black teacher. This teacher is a white teacher from Boston. 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 All right. <laughs> so, and so when you got the D on, first of all, I don't know how you can get a D on an art project, but how, what was the, what did they tell you when you got the D? You know, because it was really the end of the semester, I wasn't really told much. I was given a rubric and what grade in the grade book, and that was about it. So, I so I get and and so since then, what happened? Have you talked to the teacher? Have you? I mean, they gave you a D on this project. Now, what kind of student are you? Are you like an average student? You a yeah, B C student? A, a B student in most of my classes. You know, the occasional like B minus gets like you know if I'm not feeling too well or something, <laughs> but like. I'm 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 an average student. I would say AD. Now tell that's, us that's not average, but okay. <laughs> now tell, right, that's above average. Now tell us what. Tell us a little bit more of your extra extra extracurricular activities. So extracurricular, I already mentioned. I'm a musician. I play alto tenor saxophone. I'm in my school's uh, jazz band and uh, and wind ensemble for alto. And then I'm involved in an outside rock. Uh, jazz fusion combo. So you are actually a creative. Yeah. You are actually in the business of creating and creating art and artwork. So help me understand how did you so what how did you deal with this D? You know, it was really hard to really, you know, swallow it. Because I thought and at this rate I was trying to be desperate. This isn't this wasn't desperate in the fact that I was trying to appeal to the teacher. You know, playing the game sort of at education, which I have some, you know, pretty pretty deep opinions on that, but we can get to that. No, I would love to hear it. What I mean, when you say playing the game, first of all, what does a senior in high school know about playing the game? What is the game to you? So the game to me is regurgitating material in such a way that makes the teacher happy. And the reason why I feel this is such a bad way of learning is that 
you're not really learning. You're just learning how to appeal to a certain audience, which is sort of spineless and backbone. But if you're paying forty thousand dollars a year, I don't know. It, it makes a little bit of sense to you know have a mind for yourself to be able to think and to be able to give your own opinions and the process of your own will. So that's why. How old are you again? Wait, 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 wait. Todd, could you get your brother, man? Because your older brother, because this guy is. <laughs> how old are you? So, Miles, this is pretty deep, man. So tell me, because I think what you're you're saying it in a much more articulate way than I have. But I grew up and I was a one of a very limited number of black students in a predominantly white school, mm -hmm. and I was smart, quote unquote. But I always felt like I had to. I couldn't really interject my opinion or say what I thought. I just felt like I had to go along with what they said because it was right. You seem to have a different perspective in that, like, you know, Todd, when we went to school, we were taught, like, you better learn your ABCs, it goes in this order, and this is the way to do it, you're oh, a yeah. teacher. You seem to have a different perspective on learning. I mean, for the most part, like, you know, basic, I guess, basic or critical things, you know, like numbers and things like that, and, um, and English, like you know, ABCs and things like that, yeah, that's a good way of doing it. But for more ambiguous and more open-ended subjects, sort of you, you know, like ethics and morals and history and English, I feel like to be able to process individually and to give your own response is a better way of education. Because you know, if something isn't isn't sitting right with you or the teacher, dialogue can form and help you create a better understanding of something. Or like challenge or even uh, just affirm your understanding. So to play the game, you're really not gaining much. Uh, you know what? It's like Miles has come here and boiled down like everything we talk about all the time <laughs> in politics and everything. You play the game and you don't get very far. Right. If you play the game, you don't learn. We don't advance. Miles, when we come back, I want you to tell me a little bit about that project. We got to wrap it up, but I want you to tell me what you learned from the Vanishing Black Man Project and Rob Welch. And then, man, I'm going to tell you, man, you this dude's vocabulary. Salim! We got to get Salim around here because we can't understand some of the big words you use. <laughs> right, man, you are making us all proud. We'll talk about it more when we come back. It's the Top of Chicago 1690. More of The Morning Show with Mays Jackson coming up. Yeah, man. So you feel like you, so it's funny because when I was in school, I was always taught, you just did what the teacher told you. Yeah. You didn't even get to, hi, yeah, how are you? Awesome. Hi, hi how Cynthia. are you? Hi, Cynthia. Wow. How are you? I know, his vocabulary is crazy. He is like, doing since he was like a year and a half years old. You know? He is doing a great, great. job. That great really job. Nice. My goodness, man. Mm. My goodness, did you tell your, your buddies to listen? You're on Facebook Live too, so you can come yeah, back and yes. get it. All right, yeah, I told my friends on Snapchat to like, oh, tune in to WBON 1690 AM, go to Facebook Live, just everything, because I really want them to see. You know, I, I feel so constricted at my school, because I, I, like, this is such a weird situation. I'll move the mic, talk right. to this camera. Yeah, you feel like constricted at your school. So I'm going to tell you, you're pretty advanced. I mean, just your thank thought you, process thank you, thank you. is 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 pretty advanced i love the concept of independent thinking like as long as it's not just now were you disrespectful in child did you challenge the teacher on the grade i did challenge the teacher in the grade but i was that's not, a good thing i wasn't yes <laughs> and spoiler alert they stuck with the d really yeah and what did they rationalize the d for what was the d why did they say you got a d i personally still don't know as that's the administrator's knowledge but I was told that they were going to stick with the D. I, just, I, was I feel like I need to go to school, man. I feel like I need to go over there. Honestly, like, yo, what's up with this? I mean, in all honesty, I signed, going to Latin, I signed up with this. I signed up for some sort of encounter like this. But, you know, it's not pleasant to deal with. Hmm. You know, know, there are 120 in my grade, six, seven, eight black students. I was the only black male in that class. Is it? That's a, that's a small number. And think about being the only black person in your class and you get a D on black history from yeah, a white teacher. Happen? That makes me look really <laughs> bad. That <laughs> makes me look really bad. 
<laughs> and I promise, and I promise you, it's not that case of slacking. It, it just makes me look really bad, like I'm doing a disservice to us. <laughs> <laughs> did you see the movie Hollywood Shuffle? I did not. The you, fresher. You, you should ask your parents to, to get that movie for you. This, this, this is. Right He's here. like he felt like he failed for the race. Come I, on. I, in part, I did, but like you did not. You did not. No. <laughs> you did not. Oh. This is on Green Dolphin Street. John Coltrane live recording, 1962. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I listen to so much jazz, it's not even funny. Yeah, you jazz people are different. We are a <laughs> different breed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I do it. I don't. I really don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, no, no. We need everybody in the, in the group. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. And hey, Todd. Maze, Miles could be on uh, Name That Tune. He heard three notes and he was like, oh, John Coltrane, 1962. <laughs> you, you know this? On Green Dolphin Street. This is a live recording. It's like one of my favorites of, uh, on Green Dolphin Street. Uh, do you hear this? Like, okay, I feel so uncultured. Yeah, no. I feel like a heathen. <laughs> no, right? No. I'm, sitting, I'm sitting to a, a renaissance black man of the next <laughs> generation. Uh, Miles... Talk to me about what it's like to be uh, a black child, black young man at a school like Latin. Uh, and, and you know, you said you signed up for it. Yeah, I mean, a PWI is always going PWI to be- PWI is what? Primarily white institution. Oh wow, look at that, go ahead. So a PWI is always going to be a PWI. Yeah, diversity and equity and inclusion could always be improved at those schools, but at heart, there is nothing that's going to change about the base value of PWI. I'm always just going to be, I'm going to be a student there. I'm mean, sure I can always feel like I'm at home to an extent, that I can always feel like I belong, but a PWI, I feel like have, they, they all have sort of in intentions to sort of diversify just to make themselves look good on paper and for and for government sake. The government sake essentially. Mm. You know what uh, it's interesting. Uh, we were looking through one of those college uh, catalog books. And if you look at the numbers at, at the colleges, they fall just like, like his his class in Latin. It's about five percent of African American. Which I guess that's that's like the number they like this number will be safe with. Yes. So, Miles, talk to me about um, the the D. How did it end? I know we were talking about it off air, mm -hmm. but I want to know. Did, so, you, did you ever? Because you, you know, you said you challenged your teacher with the D. What did the school? So, did they after you explained to them your project? Did they change your grade? Did they say, "All right, little brother, we understand. You understand your people, and we understand the vanishing black man. And now we're gonna change that D to an A." No. <laughs> no, no. Do you, have you been taking lessons from Todd? I built that up, and you just say no, <laughs> yeah, right. no. They didn't, so no, they had no, no resolution. On, I don't. I still don't know the full answer to everything. Is that's the administration's knowledge, but they did not change the grade. They uh, stuck with the D. Now I, I, I'm, I'm upset about it, obviously, because it not only does it make me feel like. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, yeah. Don't, Sonia, don't, don't talk to Sonia, talk to talk to the mother. Talk to, talk to the mother. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like I really, I put a lot of effort into this. Not, not only because I, I certainly was trying to play the game, but as I was doing that, I learned so much from Rob. And I learned so much about how, you know, we are in different sectors of the black creative industry, but how similar our experiences have been and will continue to be despite the differences in our mediums. And I really wanted to broadcast that to my class and show that blacks, we can create some like hella good shit. 
Hey, 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 we're on radio. Did you get that? Oh my goodness. Mom, get the soap. You know, I, I, if, if, if there's no other eloquently eloquently way to say it, I, I might as well just go ahead and say it because it's my latent conviction. You know what I mean? True, but not already. Not already. <laughs> not on Black Ash Okay. But so it sounds like a Blackish episode. I mean, I mean enough episodes <laughs> for Blackish to say, "Wow, this is well, right into this." I feel like, but this is kind of what she wanted. The teacher wanted a blackish episode. He wanted to talk about the vanishing black man. Mm-hmm. So I bet if he would have came in in some Jordans and talking about some, then it may have been a different kind of reception to this. Now, how many other black people were in this class? So the class was in the, was nine students. There were three Sorry. black students, including myself, but I was the only black man. Up. Uh, there were actually there were four black students. There were three black girls and myself. And so the brother got the worst grade. So now let me ask the question. Now, what has been the response since then? In what way do you mean response? Well, what? Is, how? How are you treated now at the school because of your? Have you? Have you let this thing go? Or are you still pushing? Well, I'm a, I'm, that's a, go ahead. You I'm push. still fighting. I'm still fighting. Like <laughs> because I, I almost I feel bad. I don't actually I really don't feel bad for these. I feel like I'm a whistleblower at this rate. Uh, so do we need to blow the whistle? Do we need to call Latin School and tell them to give our man an A? What you trying to get, man? <laughs> I, I, I'm not really give me the phone number. Give me the phone number at Latin School. We we'll get that, hey. I, I mean, I mean, really, like, I feel like black students are a commodity at PWIs, and I feel like this is just an example of that. You know, we're there just to make their numbers look good. Wow. And I know, that, I know, it's a lot for like a seventeen-year-old to say, but I, I. I really want to say that the education at Latin has made me become self-aware and sentient of my color in the classroom. Can I tell you something? So I'm, I'm going to say I clearly could not say that as eloquently as he could at that age. Now, well, but at this age, you have said that you uh, you were the black kid in your class and you were the black kid. I was the black kid in the class and, and, and I think about Miles and I think about how awesome and impressive he is and I'm glad that his parents made him stick with it, right? Because remember, I, I decided I wasn't going to be smart anymore. I decided I was going to retreat into the stereotype of being the black guy that was the, instead of the pilot, the creative, the guy that, the young man that could be aspirational. I didn't come and have a way to fight. I just went back to the back of the class. That is why I thought it was so important today for Miles to come to the morning show to be able to give his perspective. Guys, we hear stories about, um, we hear stories about the cool fights, you know, everybody's walking out of school and, you know, we're gonna fight for the basketball team and we're gonna, but how many times do we hear this story being told from the vantage point of our youth? Think about him saying that going to this school made him that much more aware of how black he was. And remember I told you parents fight to get their kids to these schools? And then their kids fight a whole nother battle that we never ever talk about. And Miles was the embodiment of that. Miles, tell everybody, um, well, you know what? You got you got 30 seconds to close. Um yeah, what do I say? Say bye. You can say hello to your classmates. You can thank us for being here. Thank your parents for pouring into you. Man, you you figured out. Man, you there, say thank there, you. I owe a lot of things, it seems like. And like thank you, Mate, for having me on. It was great to have you have someone to listen and understand where I'm coming from. <laughs> with, with, with the, I'm actually quite stoic right now. I'm on I'm on radio, but I'm quite stoic. I have a lot of I have a lot of emotion behind this, so I'm trying to channel it eloquently. But thank you so much for giving me an outlet to talk about this. Thanks, mom. Thank you to whoever. Thanks to all my friends, family, people who've listened, supported, and even thank you to those who have challenged me because I'm just. That much better now. Hey y'all. Uh, See that's what I'm you're talking about. You're not stoic. <laughs> you're not stoic. Hey, can I say this? Somebody find the letter, the number that's Latin school. Y'all call and tell them this brother better get an A. Miles gets an A, and you call me when you get the A, because I'm telling you, we're gonna be doing this for the rest of the week. Stop Chicago 1690. Hey y'all, we gotta get out of here. So for Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, for Sonia Escobar, the musical conductor, the soul plane. For Corey, for my co-host, Ty Stroger, I am the host of the WVON Morning Show asking every day what's in it for the black people. And if you don't like it, you can still tell them. May said we out of here. Peace. The talk of Chicago Sorry, we was up and against the voice of the nation. Great job. 1690 great WVON. Job, great job. Chicago. If you, man, brother.
That was. <laughs> you are doing a service to your people. You have done a service to yes. your people, and I'm telling you now, I better feel they're going they they gon' I hope so. I really I really do. <laughs> he wants his A. Look. And, and honestly, I feel like I have it kind of easy because there's this whole colorist debate. Like, I don't, I don't mean to buy into that stereotype, but I'm kind of light. I'm kind of light skinned but I feel like there are certainly other student, other black students at Latin who have it much worse, but continue to play the game and just you know stay complacent because they don't want trouble from administrators or teachers, anything like that. So. Look at that, man. Look at that. We got we got a generation, man. Y'all got to protect the 